All right, peace, family, peace. We are now live. We are now live. Shout out to everybody in the chat waiting. Uh, I was waiting to see uh, Billy Carson is in Egypt right now. Unfortunately, he is having internet problems, so he is unable to join. I was waiting to see if there was a possibility he yeah, pop oh. up, but the brother Billy, yeah, the brother Billy, he's not able to join the site, and it's a shame. It would have been an absolutely uh, magnificent, magnificent broadcast, but the brother's have an internet problem. The brother's in Egypt right now. He's doing his Egypt trip. He did one last year, and he's doing one this year. So uh, somebody said, ask Rod Hayes. Yeah, you know, Rod Hayes is that thorough. I could call Rod Hayes right now, and if, if he has time available, he will join. If he has time available, he's that thorough with it. But I'm not going to, uh, you know, I'm going I'm to let the brother relax. The brother, the brother works hard with this information. So, you know, I'm going to respect the brother in his time. But at, at anyway, shout out to the brother, uh, Rod Hayes. But like I said, um, yeah, it's just unfortunate the brother Billy won't be able to make it tonight. Fortunately, we have Dr. B here, and he is absolutely phenomenal. And he was in the music industry. So the brother, the brother, the owl me and Cam Bot is coming out with, this brother's going to convert it to four, um, 32 hertz. Brother knows all this. The brother knows. So it's going to be an amazing show regardless, family. So stay tuned. Um, get comfortable. Hit the like button. Let your friends and family know Brother Rich is live right now. I see we already got 500 people in the building. All right. And I start, I, I, I um, set up the show late. So I'm sorry, y'all. Just been all types of technical things. I set up the show late today. So I know a lot of y'all couldn't click on the link and, and uh, wait in the room. You know, so. Um, yeah, let's get to a few commercials. Then I'm going to bring my guest on, my brother, Dr. B. And we'll be right back, family. All right. Welcome to the Sacred Tree. This is Stardust Jewelry for the Collective. All of our pieces are spiritually downloaded, handcrafted, and created with the love and healing powers of our set. We pride ourselves on using nothing but the best crystals, 14 karat gold, and sterling silver to highlight the conductivity of this alchemical process. So many superpowers for us to tap into, and the crystals are here to help you. I always say whatever crystal you choose, it chooses you at the same time. It's a symbiotic relationship. So feel free to tap into the sacred tree life. See what we had to offer. Rock. It's the Numerovational Session with King Simon. Text your full name and date of birth to 347-496-1022. That's 347-496-1022. And get my books on Amazon now. On Sunday, October 9th, in Stone Mountain Village from 2 to 7 p.m., Papa Ashwa Kwesi and the Red Pillar will be in Stone Mountain. Get your tickets through Linktree forward slash King Simon, the Numerovator, or text now at 347-496-1022. Get your tickets now. Hey there. Had a bad dream? I have dreams too. Some parts are scary and some parts are fun. Always remind yourself, it's only a dream and everything will be okay. I had a dream about being in a forest too. Check it out, my pet Petey was with me. Order your copy of Kayla Petey and the Forest on Amazon today. All right, family, all right. We are back, we are live. Uh, we're getting ready to start. Yeah, I haven't got a notification in a while. Yeah, I'm having problems with my text messaging service. So I'll, nobody gets text messages from me no more when I go live. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to change companies, family. So I'm going to have to do the process all over again. I might have to do that. I'm not sure. But I'm going to keep everybody updated with that. Because I really liked how I was able to notify you guys myself and not depend on YouTube. Uh, you know, so I, but I'll let I'll keep every I'll definitely keep everybody uh, updated with that. All right. Dr. B, welcome back, my brother. Welcome back. Hey, man, it's an honor to be here. Good to see you again in the second day. <laughs> indeed, indeed. Hey, I want to give a shout out, Dr. B, to the wonderful individuals I met. Listen, Dr. B told me about this health store in Atlanta. What's the name of it, Dr. B? Health Unlimited. Health Unlimited. And I met some wonderful uh, sisters over there, some wonderful queens. So shout out to the queens that I met at Health Unlimited. One of the, uh, one of the sisters actually gave me... A hundred dollar donation on this. I was at the cashier and she like, here, brother Rich. So I, I'm like, oh, thank you. The cashier was like, who are you? She the white lady. She like, I know what I'm on. She like, who this nigga here? <laughs> <laughs> but shout out to the health store. Shout out to the sister that um showed support on the spot yesterday. 
and shout out to the other sister I seen. But um, it's just it was just a wonderful experience, and I want to thank you, Doctor B, for introducing me to the health store. I got a lot of wonderful products, my brother. A lot yes. of wonderful products. Yeah, that's a good spot, man. It's a couple, it's a couple good spots around town, and that's one of them. Indeed, indeed, indeed. What was the other one? Savan, Savan, Savananda is another one. Savananda, that's in Little okay. Five Points. Right. They got a lot of good products too, you know. And uh, those are the, mostly the two places that I go to between Savananda and you know Health Unlimited. Health mm. Unlimited has a lot of the high end, obscure type things that you can't find in most stores. They're very mm. rare, you know, in the gray area type stuff. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. it's, they're, they're both good stores, man. Good quality. Yeah, toward the end of the show, I might show y'all some of the stuff, uh, Dr. B. Oh, and I, you know what I want to show y'all? I want to show y'all the um, monatomic platinum that I got from Dr. B that is absolutely phenomenal. Like, I got to show this. I got to show y'all before the show. And this dude, Dr. B, is a genius. And um, yeah, the brother, the brother, he he does his stuff. And I, I've talked to him and I've dealt with a lot of people. So yeah, shout out to that brother and his products, his products is absolutely amazing and and the brother gave me his products months ago and i told the brother you know i don't want to give you my opinion too soon i want to sit on it for a little while and i want to you know i don't want to just be fake and phony about it i want to sit on it for a while and really observe and analyze you know i'm a virgo and i reflect on it and see and and think how it was before and after so after about a month and two of sitting on his products it took that long because i'm being honest and i gotta say the brother's the brother's the truth with his, with his with his products. So thank you, my brother, for sending me those products. They are amazing, my brother. Well, thank you for, for trying them and taking the journey with me, bro. Indeed. Let's uh get ready. Okay, we got about 800 people in here. Let's get ready. So the name of the show today, family, is Cymatics and the Vibrational Secrets of, of the Universe. So let's check out. So Cymatics, uh, Dr. B in a nutshell, is the study of visible sound and vibration so they do these things they got these things all over the internet right now where it's like a plate and they put sand on it they play a tone say the tone is um, and then the tone will generate a figure a sacred geometrical figure it may be a snowflake it may be um you know the flower of life it 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 it, 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 it varies depending on the frequency that's being played. So what I want to ask you, we've seen this with Dr. Emoto with water. When you speak yes. to water and the water took certain geometrical figures, what I want to ask you before we get into this wonderful conversation, because we're talking about that, that, and we're also talking about vibrational secrets of the universe that people may not be aware of. So it's going to be an absolutely amazing show. And to start out with Dr. B, as somebody that was in the music industry, as somebody who went to college and went here and went there, studied this, and, I mean, you studied under some masterful teachers. I want to ask you, give me a basic scientific explanation of what sound is before we even get started, my brother. Well, just a correction. I didn't go to college. I taught at college. <laughs> I told you, you said you went to college or something and they... um. Well, I, for, I went I went to technology school, electronics technology, for two point five weeks. For okay, two and a half weeks. I, go, <laughs> I, I graduated myself. When I saw the symbols, when they showed the symbols for the electrical circuits, yeah. everything came online, and I walked out. Oh, but I, I I did teach at UCLA for four years, which was amazing because I didn't have a degree, but they called me for over a year, me and my partner at that time, and you know to teach a music industry course. It was called yeah. this music, this business of music. And it was more about, you know, um, you know, how to produce, you know, management, how to be a good artist, how to be a side musician. Uh, it dealt with promotions, uh, everything to do with the business. We even brought like Jeffrey Osborne in and a lot of industry professionals to mm -hmm. talk to the class about how to make music, how to make money. And also, uh, I wanted to teach a health course, but they wouldn't let me. Because of the, you know, UCLA, you know, clinic is right there, hospital. So they said, you can't teach that. You know, they got that covered. Mm -hmm. So what I was able to do was to tuck that into my course because I looked at how many people in music were getting ill, you know, mm -hmm. based on the lifestyle, based on the music and, you know, all, all of the things that were going on in the business that caused stress. Mm -hmm. So I also taught, you know, health under the guise of music because music has a lot to do with health. And music mm -hmm. is medicine. Mm -hmm. So once you get the rhythm 
and the understanding, overstanding, understanding of what music is, you realize music is everything. So uh, at a very young age, you know, I was um, kind of a special child, as they used to call us. You know, I was, I was always in the corner. I didn't really talk to anybody. I didn't have much to say. I looked at the world around me and I was like this. I don't know what's going on here. It doesn't make any sense. They watch the news all day. You know, mm. the Vietnam War, you know, people coming home, you know, with half people went left whole, came back half. You know, mm. it was really a deep time for me. And, you know, we used to do this thing called duck and cover, but we had to get mm -hmm. under the desk, you know, because they said it could be a, it was either for a tornado or a, a hurricane, drill. a fire drill, or yeah. a nuclear war, a nuclear bomb. Now, I don't know what getting under the desk is going to do if it's a nuclear war, but, right. you know, a lot of things were being programmed in our heads constantly in the <laughs> images that we were seeing. It mm. just took me to a place where I didn't fit in. You know, mm. so and then they said I had, you know, dyslexia. They said I see things backwards. I read backwards mm. and a lot of different things that they now call the I probably would be ADD, DDA, ADHD, all of them. They just didn't mm. name them that yet. They just call them special or he's a little, mm. you know, they would whisper, hey, he might be a little retarded, <laughs> mm. <laughs> which meant I was behind. But actually, I was yeah. ahead. Yeah. So the thing that helped me was music. And mm. I loved music. When the music would come on, I changed. Mm -hmm. Everything would change. So I wanted to play an instrument and it was I picked drums. I picked a per percussion, actually conga drums, because I didn't want to relearn how to read music. But actually, my first instrument I was forced to play was the clarinet. Mm -hmm. They got it for my oldest brother. He didn't play it for long. Then, mm -hmm. and then my next brother had to play it. So, of course, it got passed down to me. And I just didn't feel this horn and blowing this thing. And I just wasn't feeling it. It didn't look good. I didn't see the, the girls wasn't chasing the guy with the little ugly horn. You know what I'm saying? That was my perception at the time. Right, right, right. But the drums had a vibration. And I was captivated by, you know, the you know African dance, you know the, the the rhythms and all of the different polyrhythms and you know uh, uh, the vibration that music put out. So I you know got I got into drums and my grandmother because my father wasn't going to buy it, but my grandmother was the one who said I'll buy you a drum if you learn to play the piano. Mm. So I learned to play the drum and you know I kind of tinkered around on the piano, but the drums you know I realized the kind of drums I chose was conga drums. Mm. Um, Conga drums are different because they're not for, like the djembe, a lot of people know, they say African drums, they think of the djembe. The djembe is for ceremony, for dance. It's, you know, it's for, you know, we're having a party, we're, you know, we're doing a ritual for this, you get the, the djembe. But the conga was for language. Mm -hmm. It was for sending messages through the forest mm -hmm. because the sound of it and the shape of it. Mm -hmm. could actually project tones miles and miles and miles through the forest. So different tribes could communicate using drums. And there's different rhythms that have different frequencies, different tones, different sounds that actually are words. It's a language. It's actually mm -hmm. what they call a language syntax, you see. And, you know, the people who didn't know the language couldn't speak it, so they didn't hear it. They, they don't know. They just hear drums. Oh, they're playing drums again. Yeah, mm -hmm. hey, hey, babe, they're playing drums tonight. Oh, we mm. wasn't just playing drums. You know, we were sending messages. We were talking. Somebody's getting married. Something's going on. The wind is coming. The storm is here. You know, get ready because this is happening. So we knew things before they happened because we could communicate across the miles. And we'd pick up the information in our skin, in our hair first. Mm. So, you, so you can feel it in your skin, in your hair, and in your gut before you can even hear it. You see? So... And, and, and what I realized was playing those drums took me somewhere. And, you know, I, 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 I was fortunate because I, I used to hang out at this place called the, Art, the Artist Collective, where all of these famous jazz musicians would come and they would teach people in the community in New England. They would teach them, you know, how to play instruments to keep us off the streets. Mm -hmm. So I took, you know, I went down there with my drum and I wanted to learn to play conga drums. Mm -hmm. And it was very interesting because. You know, they didn't have a conga teacher. Well, they did for a minute, but then he'd leave. Then they had another one for a minute. And each one of them I learned like one or two things from. But mm -hmm. one day, this the guy who owned the place, his name was Jackie McLean. If you ever mm -hmm. look up the jazz artist, Jackie McLean. Mm -hmm. You know, he played with Miles and all those people. Incredible sax player. He walked in the room one day and I said, he said, what are you doing? He says, I'm sitting here waiting for a teacher. He says, why are you waiting for mm -hmm. a teacher? I says, because I want to learn to play drums. He says, well, the best way to learn is to become a teacher. I said, well, how am I going to mm. become a teacher if I don't know? He says, well, if you sit down 
right? And just tap into the teacher part of you, it's already in you. And he said, look across the street. And it was these, you know, children across the street was playing basketball. He said, listen to that basketball. Listen to the rhythm. Listen to the way the ball bounces with certain people. And mm. certain rhythms and certain the way the people, you know, do layups and, you know, all of those things, they all have a certain rhythm, which makes them good. Study mm. the rhythms of what they're doing. Listen to the Shit. sound. Listen to their breath. Listen to the when they, when they sneakers and hit the ground. He says, listen to that. Go take your drum and go sit over there and play. Yo. So they would be playing I, ball I, and I... I never thought of basketball in that way. God damn, brother. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Boom, wow. boom, 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 whoosh, boom, 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 boom. And the sneakers. It's actually this is this is a tribal language. If you were to record it, you'd make music. So I took my drum over there and began to play with them. I'm I didn't play sports, I played the drum that they played sports too. And they would love for me to come because they played. It was a smoother thing. It was more peace. And it mm. wasn't about battling. It was about people working together. So mm. folks said, well, you know, tell us more about this drum. I said, well, why don't you come across the street, you know, and learn? So I started getting guys to come over, actually girls too. And I began to teach people what I knew. Now, I only knew about three things. But every week since the, I was like the, the teacher now, right, the young teacher at, you know, what, 15 years old, you know, I had to go home and study things. And listen to records and try to figure out those rhythms and what they were doing. So I'd listen to Santana. I'd listen to George Duke and Alatanji and, and, you know, all of the different incredible drummers and people who use drums in their music, which in the 60s and 70s, the conga drums were very important. You know what I'm saying? If you listen to almost every, every type of music at those times, they have congas in there because there's a secret message that takes you into a certain trance being transmitted with the conga drum you see so i fit right in i mean all of those songs uses the superfly all those soundtracks shaft the, the congas are loud the african presence or the i should say the uh the uh the original presence the the indigenous presence is there through the drums as a message as a language to tap you in well after a while man i had a class of about maybe 70 students and i was learning something every week so i could teach it so I was the teacher and the student teaching the students who were teaching me to be a teacher. And it just became so much fun, man. And, you know, we, we were in this old school, man, and it had these big empty rooms. It was made of like, you know, linoleum tile and, you know, the old schools, they were brick. So the sounds of the drums would just travel through the building. And we'd start creating this, this, this thing. And it was interesting. One year, you know, uh, Mr. McLean comes in. He says, man, you know, little B, he says, uh, why don't you come play with us? Uh, these are these are some bad jazz dudes. I mean, some of them are some of the best jazz musicians ever. And I'm just a little child. And I'm like, what do you mean? He says, come, come sit in with us. So I go sit in a room with these guys and I'm nervous and I'm sweating. And I said, well, what do I play? And Mr. McLean said, what do you mean? What do you play? Just, just, just listen. And he talks to the musicians. He says, first, we're going to take off and we're going straight for serious. We're going to go around serious A two times. We're going to go serious B counterclockwise five times. Then we're shooting to Jupiter and we're going to skip over the rings of Jupiter. Then we're going under the ocean into Agartha, the city inside the earth. And we're going to come out through the volcanoes and hit the clouds and reach heaven on earth. What? What? This is how they talked. I mean, what are you talking about? I'm sitting here like, what, what do you mean we're going to serious? Now, remember, this time, I'm not Dr. B. Serious until, like, you know, a long time later, 1996. These guys were speaking the language of the universe. They were talking about playing in the cosmos, being in the cosmos, and vibrating with the cosmos. So I was nervous. I was scared. I was almost in tears because I don't want to mess up. And these cats are playing some way out stuff. You know, they, they're hitting it, and, and they stop, and they say, well, B, why aren't you playing? I says, I don't know what to play. And he says... Put your hands on the drums. Close your eyes. And this is really important, this piece. Put your hands on the drums. Close your eyes. Imagine a point in a dark room, like a candle or a light. Just focus on that candle and a light in that room alone. This creates a sacred space called an idiom. An idiom is a place or a place where there's a special way of feeling and living or thinking or speaking. It's a sacred 
place where you will be contacted. You have to become a contactee. They'll come and get you and they'll put your hands on the drums and you'll play the rhythm. I'm like, who's they? So I did it. I sat there and I started breathing. And all of a sudden I started playing. Boom. 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 And my hands were playing by themselves. And we played for like three hours. And the music just kept expanding. It was no, it wasn't like a song that you knew on the radio. It was just total improvisation. And when the sun went down, the lights were out in the room. We played in the dark when the sun went down, but you could see light. When people hit certain notes, the room glowed. Music is light. Light is music. Music is food. Music is nutrition. When you hit certain notes, you vibrate on the cosmic web, the real internet, Right. And it creates light and sound. It affects your body. It affects your mind. It affects your emotions. It takes you out of the place that you're in. The music got so deep. I was gone. It was like I had never had an out of body experience before. My first one was at 15. Well, mm. that I know of in that mm. room. It changed mm. everything. So jazz. Right. This is my first music was playing what they call Afro jazz. Jazz, which means love, which, which is jazzing has to do with sex. Mm -hmm. Jazz has to do with sex. That's where the word comes from, mm -hmm. you see. And, you know, that love music and that total improvisation created energy. And guess what? When I went back home, I didn't have some of the same issues I used to have. I started speaking to people. I started being open. It changed me. It started rewiring the brain because you have this neuroplasticity where your nerves and your brain can actually regrow connections based on the frequency, based on sound, based on activity, based on habits, based on what you're eating, what you're saying, what you're feeling. And because I was in so much joy and I was in so much bliss, I was rewiring my brain. I used to, st I started listening to nature. I'd walk, I'd go downtown and just <clears throat> sit on a bench, man, and watch people walk and listen to the walk. And you know how it is back east, man. You live in the projects, right? There's a way people walk in certain projects. I knew that one time when I went to Brooklyn and mm. I was just walking and people stopped and say, hey, man, what's up? You ain't from here. So what do you mean I ain't from? How you know I ain't from here? <laughs> the, way you walk. the way you walk. The way you walk. Yeah. They always <laughs> say the way you walk. That, see, that's yo. This is this real. This is real. You know, they told me to get back on the train. You better get back on the train. By bro. the way you walk, they can tell you're not from an area because you, of the rhythm. Wow. You can go back up to Manhattan with that, but you ain't gonna yeah. do that down here in Brooklyn. Yeah. <laughs> right. And you know, you get all of these little messages about how culture has a rhythm, it has a tone, and has a frequency. Mm. Frequency means how frequently something happens. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If a light bulb blinks one time every second, that's called one hertz, mm -hmm. one cycle per second. Mm -hmm. It cycles off, on, off, mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. If it cycles 32 times a second, right, that's mm -hmm. 32 hertz. Now, they call it hertz because this guy hurts. He's supposed to have discovered, you know, mm -hmm. the frequencies of sound. I guess it was no sound between him and <laughs> There's other cats that, you know, what was my man that discovered gravity? You know, there was no gravity till he came along. Oh, what, what was my man's name? The apple hit him in the tree. Uh, you know? New, new, who you talking new, about? new, new He's yeah. brand new on the planet. You know, his name is Newton. <laughs> right? You brand new ton, right? You got a ton of bullshit and wrote yeah. a book about gravity. Yeah. You discovered gravity. And, you know, these other people, Hertz discovered sound. Or actually, you know, he, he documented it. He didn't discover it. But, you know, mm. so yeah. these people get the names. But I like to call it cycles per second. How many cycles per second? So each organ in your body has a frequency, right? And mm. it is measured in cycles per second. Your heart, your, your kidneys, all the different parts of your body have these different vibrations. Basically, we live in a fluidic space, which is an orchestra. The universe is an orchestra. orchestra of sound. There's a really good book, Music of the Spheres. Now, this book, well, I don't know if you can see it. This book yeah. talks about the oh. sounds of the planets in the stars. They can rec they've recorded them. Can you see that? It's an old book. Now, now, now uh, uh, Dr. B, NASA be lying like a motherfucker. So is that is uh, is that true? 
Oh, put that book on one more time. Bill. Uh, um, I'm sorry, uh, Doctor B. Yeah, let me just take it. Yeah, but yeah, NASA lies so much. So you think they really capture the sounds of the planets? Well, it's not that NASA lies. NASA's just not telling you all the truth. <laughs> all the okay, yeah, no, no, that that is that is it. Yeah, yeah, you're, not you're that they're right. lying. You know what I'm saying? They <laughs> you don't even know this. You you're not about to travel. You know what I'm saying? Or you know, they don't want yeah. you to know what's happening. So. Mm. Um, yes, the, 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 if the if the planet or the star has color, that's sound. Sound mm. is color. Sound is color. Sound is light. All of the frequencies or all of the uh, materials on the periodic table are measured in light. Right, yes. The weight that they're talking about is the weight of light or the weight of the frequency or the so, cycles so. per second that that frequency is blinking. So every one of those, you know, uh, celestial objects has a certain frequency, has a certain tone. And when when you hear it, it blows your mind. Now, and, I was and they asked, also have a certain color. The they have a certain table. color. Yeah. They have a certain yeah. rhythm. You yeah. see, they have a timing. You see, yeah. I, uh, I was asked to be a musical director with uh, Mother Tanetta Muhammad. Mm -hmm. She was putting together this piece called Taha, mm -hmm. which is a symphonic play or orchestra. Mm -hmm. And she asked me to come in and direct what they call the uh, the unified field. So I was to create, they had a, a guy who was uh, uh, a guy who was like an orchestra guy. He didn't even speak English. He was from China. He was mm -hmm. directing the orchestra. My job was to, just, to con, you know, construct or create or improvise the symphonic field based on the vibration of drums and instruments and strings and horns. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they were playing like straight up classical parts. I'm playing some stuff that is almost what you call indigenous classic classical music, right? Mm -hmm. And we, you know, it was really interesting because she said, well, Dr. B, you know, I want you to, I want you to hear a little bit of what I hear. Now she plays the piano, but she only plays things one time. She can only play it one time. Mm -hmm. So I needed to get into her head. So she said, I'm going to give you these CDs that were giving to, given to me. And I can't mention to where I got them. I want you to go home and listen to them. So I go mm -hmm. home and listen to these CDs. These are some CDs, man, with the, you know top secret on them. Yeah. The sounds of the universe. Mm -hmm. This was from like the 30s and 40s and 50s, man. They recorded the sounds of different planets. And the sounds was just... You, you've never heard sounds like this. The sounds of, of, of stars and, you know, comets moving by. You, your ears, you, you can't even imagine them. So I had to, like, go to sleep listening to this stuff and these sounds so I could see what she was hearing because she was tapped into the universe. Mm -hmm. So then one day she, you know, we're rehearsing right for her thing and she brings, you know, uh, Alice Coltrane to the rehearsal. Mm -hmm. now, Alice Coltrane is John Coltrane's wife. Man, she walks in and she says, "Uh, you got a piano?" Now my mind is blown because this is another very famous, you know, jazz musician. But she's also a a, a guru, you know. Uh, 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 she has an ashram and she's she's on a spiritual level that's you know way out. She starts playing the piano, man. And we start playing. We play for like three, four hours. And we go into a zone. And there's this communication that happens with musicians from all over the world that, you know, there's a, there's a secret information network where we don't need to know the same language. We just meet and play. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, these are musicians that are like what we call real original musicians who play instruments and spend their life playing an instrument. You, mm -hmm. you understand what I'm saying? That's, mm -hmm. a, that's a whole thing because when you're playing an instrument, all of your brain is working. So it's it's kinesthetic. So it's your feeling. You know, you're playing with your fingers. You know, you're looking, you're seeing, you're hearing, you're tasting. You know, after a while, I develop what they call synesthesia. So synesthesia is when, like, when I'm seeing sound, I can see sound. I see sound. Like, if I listen to your music, I'm going to see certain colors. In fact, I learned how to mix music because I knew how to mix the colors. You know, that color and that color don't go together. So I'd bring up certain frequencies or certain channels to get those colors to look like a good picture. Then I realized I could taste sound. I could taste it. I, I, I was, my senses, I could smell sound. I didn't want to tell anybody because they're going to say, oh, he's special. They want to operate on him, you know. Yeah, you know that's, that's special shit again. Uh oh, 60s, it, it pops up showing, again. You know, 60s, you start showing special things and they come get you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, they got to, yeah. you know, they might lobotomize you and 
Put yeah. half your brain inside of a dolphin and see what happens. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, uh. So we as beings are musical instruments. And you know how they used to say, well, you know, one side of your brain is logic and it, you know, connects to language and numbers. And the other side of your brain is intuitive and it's more mm -hmm. musical and more about art. Mm -hmm. It's not true. Not true. Not when you play music. Oh, okay. Or okay. when you listen to music, the brain merges. It brings all the pieces of the brain together. When they put, you know, when they look at the brain, the activity of the brain, <clears throat> they see the brain, every part of it coming alive based on the type of music that you're listening to. Mm. So, Dr. B, the brain separates with language but merges with music. Well, music... Music enters a place way between the conscious and the subconscious, left brain, right brain, forebrain, back brain. All of it, it just merges because mm. the brain is basically a vibratory instrument. Mm. It's taking vibrations and turning them into chemicals. Yeah. The brain is taking vibrations and turning them into chemicals. It's not thinking. We think that you know, we was told the brain is doing the thinking. It's not. Mm. It is a taking what we're hearing, seeing, tasting, feeling, and going through mm. and turns it into chemicals to get the body to react and act a certain way, mm. to animate us. It's mm. like a it's like like it's like a it's like the person operating mixing board in the studio. That's all it is. Mm. Mm. You see. Mm. But you know, once you realize that the universe is an orchestra or an orchestra, what they call an orchestra, or means gold, <laughs> right? Oro mm -hmm. means gold, and mm -hmm. the first note of the musical scale used to be ura. You know how ura. we say, you know how we say do re mi fa do, so yeah. Like do. Yeah, this is Latin. Oh, look shit. up the Latin on this, bro. This one. Uh oh. Make sure you got your wig on, your cap uh -oh. on. Oh, here we go. Do in Latin means money. The older scales of music didn't start with money or dough. So like the solfeggio, you know, it's a six-note six scale. It started with ura or aura, which was the black female note that all other notes were born out of. You needed ura, the bass note. The lowest vibration was ura or aura or black gold. She yeah. gave birth to every note after her. Yeah. So you know how you have do re, right? Yeah. So yeah. ura makes re. Re is like the lights, light energy coming from the sun. Re, ra. Like you say, I'm in ra. You know what I'm saying? The rays mm. of the sun is male energy. So out of the female, the male is born. Ra. That's when the animals move. When the lion wakes up in the morning, does that roar? Rawr! Everybody moves. It's movement. But the that is excited. You know, he is excited by her. So it's ura re me. Me means miracle. I need you to hear me on this. The female gives birth and energizes the male. When they come together, they create a third entity. It's called me. A miracle. When you say me, hey, look at me, man. Well, me, how'd you get to be me? <laughs> a male and a female had to come to get come to make this happen, unless you was one of them test tube babies. They did make some of them too. <laughs> I think we met a test tube baby. Used to come to our place in LA and just sit there with not blink. I don't know. We needed to see if they had a navel or not. But anyway. Um, it's a miracle when a man, when a female and a male come together, or when the anode and the cathode come together, or when the positive and the negative come together and make me, mm -hmm. me, the third note is the miracle. Now, check out music. If I just play two notes, ding, 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 it ain't no song. Ding, ding. In fact, that'll get on your nerves, man. You, you do a dope beat, and I just start singing, ding, ding. You're going to be like, man, when are you going to do something else? Ding, 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 ding. Put a third note there. The third note creates the melody, the melody, me. 
It's a miracle because now that you have three notes, you have a direction that you're going in. If you just take two steps all day, the same two steps, you won't go anywhere. You got to take the third step. That's the miracle. That's what sets the pace. That's what sets the direction. That's the navigator. You are born to be a navigator. You are the navigator. That's why they talk about the nativity scene and all this. It's a miracle that the baby is born and becomes a navigator of their own lives. But if you're not taught that you're here to be a navigator, you know what I'm saying? You just feel like you're on somebody else's boat just floating. But you have to create your own path, your own what they call in Asians, you know, tra traditions, they call it the, the, the path or the, you know, uh, or Tao. So, do, re, mi. Ura, re, mi, fa. Man, fa is so deep. Man, it's like the family. It's like everything comes together in fa. Father. The father is supposed to help hold the family together. Mm -hmm. But when he's not being the father because He's his fatherhood has been broken mm -hmm. by whatever he's been through. The family begins to become splintered. Fa also has to do with what with the direction that the whole family's taking as a whole. You see, then you got T. T has to do with movement, like martial arts is T, the movement. You said the crossing between two worlds is a T. The fallopian between the fallopian tombs and the uterus is the, that's a T. Mm. So the original musical scale was ura re mi, right? Like do re mi fa so la T. Then they put do at the end. The reason why they put do on is because they began to turn music into money. And when the music became money, we had a problem. You know about this. Like when, you know, we, we was all doing, the, you know, music was happening. We had hip hop, jazz, you know, we had rap. We had all kind of music. Then all of a sudden, somebody came out with a song that said, Cash rules everything around me. You know who that was? Yeah, Wu-Tang. Cash rules everything around me. That mm -hmm. changed everything. Cream. Cash rules everything around me. The cream. See, the cream's supposed to be the best. The cream rises to the top. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But we got caught in a trap, a loop. The music became real loopy after that. And all the cadences, all the rhythms were the same. It was just loops over and over and over. And they started calling it being commercial. You got to be commercial. We got to be able to we got to be able to sell it. We got to be able to market it. It's got to be, this is your job. This is work. Work is war. So when something becomes commercial, it's about commerce and war. Even the language that we speak English is basically based on commerce and war. We don't have a lot of words that, that are outside of that. So when the music becomes about commerce and war and competition, right, all of a sudden now you begin to fold into not playing rhythms and playing frequencies that take you to another level so that you can be the navigator. So you can have a family of, of notes that keeps expanding and improvis uh, Im, you know, improving in, in, under improv, Im, uh, improvisation. It becomes a circle, becomes a, a loop. So we got into the, this, the, 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 the musical loop. We started buying drum machines and things and finding things where everything was going to be perfect. The beat was exactly the same. It wasn't like music that it used to be. It changed. It became robotic. It became artificial intelligence. I mean, you could play the drums, right, on your keyboard, right, and hit a button called quantize. And it puts all the notes right on the grid, and they're all perfect. But they're not perfect as far as your biology. They're perfect as far as being commercially viable, and which takes people into a trance state. And it's about the money. When it becomes about the money with almost any art, you lose the art. You lose the heart. You lose the love. You see what I'm saying? I mean, I was there, and I, you know, when I, you know, when I first started doing, you know, uh, hip hop in California, you know, it, it came. It was all about the rhythm. 
It was all about the same rhythm, the same thing. You know, I brought my 808 drum machine in the studio and pushed that button, and that was it. I didn't have to really play my instruments anymore. I didn't have to have any real talent. I needed need to know how. I only needed to know how to turn that drum machine on. You see? Now, of course, as a producer, I blew up because I was taking African rhythms and putting them on the drum machine. And then I was putting in notes in between called ghost notes that people couldn't hear. Mm. I was sliding that into music. So this is why, you know, like when we did, you know, DJ Quick's first album. It was the first hip hop artist in history whose album went gold on the first single. Nobody ever did this. And I told the record company it was going to happen. That's mm. why we that's how we got the money cuz I went in there and told them and they said, well, "What are you going to do?" I said, "We're going to have a record and it's going to be gold on the first single." Usually you got to have mm. three, four singles, you know what I'm saying? Gold on the first single and he's going to be the first black hip hop artist in history to have a billboard on Sunset. They laughed. Guess mm. what? Yeah. Almost within a year, DJ Quick has the only black billboard of a, a hip hop artist on Sunset. DJ Quick no matter what they were talking about, because I didn't have anything to do with what they were talking about, I was helping to make the music. And I was using old instruments, and we were recording analog. And this is where it gets deep. I was recording on tape. When you record on tape the old way, you are taking sounds and turning them into electrical impulses using magnets and coils. It's called analog. Mm-hmm. You're using tubes or these these electrical devices called tubes and transistors. They get warm. They make heat. But they're Mm -hmm. big. Mm -hmm. So the machines we were using was big, bigger than this bookshelf behind me. And the boards were gigantic. You know, everything was, you know, was hot and warm. But the sound was fat and it was rubbery (laughs) and smooth and it was natural. Mm -hmm. Because Mm -hmm. when you record analog using magnetism, guess what? You actually pick up the frequency of the people in the room. DJ Quick just did a video talk. Did you see the video he did talking about that? I had that. You know what's what's amazing about DJ Quick? He's Mm. a genius. Mm. I had that exact talk with DJ Quick back in the 80s. (laughs) Dope. It was like he sampled it. He retained it. He retained it. He took it and he takes whatever it is to the next level. Yeah. When your students can take it to the next level, Mm. that's beautiful. Yeah. Take it to the next level. Mm. And Quick... You know, he's he's fast. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? When I heard him talking, I said, wow. I said, he's almost me, what I said verbatim. But yeah. he put his thing on it. So yeah. you got to put your thing on it. See, that's improvisation. Mm. And see, what Quick knew was how to take old songs and old grooves, mm-hmm. right? Because he, he was a DJ. And he'd come in the studio and he said, man, B, man, I want to reproduce this. I would say, okay, well, that's a... You know, that's a Honer D6 clavinet. They're using a the Jimi Hendrix crybaby wah-wah. That's a, a, a Wurlitzer uh, 200A, and they're using copper wire. He says, man, you know all this stuff? I said, I know all this stuff, man. I know mm. all about how music is made. I can listen and tell you what kind of compressor, what kind of, you know, what everything they're using in the music when it's analog. Because mm. that's what I came up with. That was my whole study. That was my whole life. I could feel it. Mm. So music back then, you could feel because you were capturing the vibration. Mm-hmm. So we'd be in the studio sometime, right? And we're co- recording the music. It's dope. It's going <clears> on because we got the young guys and the older guys. And we're coming together as one. And I'm yeah. like the wise man. I'm bringing books. I'm bringing the ISIS papers in there. You know what I'm saying? We, we, we were reading deep stuff. I'm teaching them knowledge, you know, about what's really going on, where the gangs really got started. So we're giving them science about the world and how the vibration of the earth works and who controls things. But at the same time, you know, Quick was able to take this and drop some of this in his music. I said, you can talk all that talk. I don't know what you're talking about because it wasn't my, you know, that wasn't my world, my upbringing. But they were street griots talking about their lives. But if you could just drop some science every once in a while, Mm. drop some science, which, you know, he was able to do, you know. But we'd be in the studio, man, and somebody would come in that we didn't really know. And we'd stop. I said, well, who who, who just came in the room? Y'all know him? No, we don't know him. Nobody know him. Oh, man, you know, I'm just, you know, I heard y'all outside. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? It was like dope. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, I just want you know what I'm saying? No, you got to leave. Because his vibration changed the Change frequency that. of the room. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The room is the womb. The womb is the room. 
We are in the womb. We are pulling information in from nowhere into somewhere. This creative process is where all of us together are becoming an organism. It was very important what we did. Now, we noticed that if folks started drinking alcohol, guess what? Things got a little funny. Folks had mm. beefs that pop up, you know what I'm saying? Folks is arguing, you know, folks start comparing pistols and, you know what I'm saying? And all of a sudden it's about the battle rap and who's better. Well, when they had some weed, all of a sudden the creativity got crazy. Mm. It was like on a whole nother level. We just started taking it further and further. Now, remember at this same time, I'm still doing R&B and jazz. I wasn't only doing hip hop. But the hip hop records was blowing up, man. And they were coming to me because I was one of the few people who could go to the hood and pull the talent back because I could see the glow in the skin. Yeah, we go in there. I could see the glow in people's skin in their auric field that had special talents because I have synesthesia. Mm. So I'm meeting people who are not necessarily rappers or singers, but I could tell they have what it takes. So my thing was to help inspire them and help work with them, pull them off the streets, give them a place to live, give them some money and help inspire the talent that I could feel they had mm -hmm. because they had a certain glow. They had a mm -hmm. certain vibe and certain ones even had little sparkles in mm -hmm. their skin. Sound familiar? I just sent you the video. <laughs> Because that yeah. those, those sparkles in the skin is the penilin, the sacred secretion from the pineal, turning into gold, black gold, coming out through the melanocytes in the skin. That's gold. You, you saw it? Yes, your arm is on you. <laughs> it's gold coming out of your skin. You're emitting gold. We make gold, especially when we're asleep, when we're in a dark place, when we're in total creativity. Let, let me show the people what you're talking about. Show, show them the picture, man. Show them. What the brother's talking about. Just to give y'all. Uh, for everybody, we got since we got 2,000 people in here now, let me just give you a little update. For everybody who just tapped in, uh, the brother Billy Carson is in Egypt, and he is having internet difficulties. So the brother was not able to join us. So uh, it, he will not be on tonight. So it will just be the brother, Dr. B. Serious. So if you are just joining us, Billy Carson is currently in Egypt. He does this trip that he's done for the past two years. He went there last year to Egypt, and he just went there again. And um, he is uh, having internet problems over there. So family, so yeah, uh, he will, will not be joining us tonight. All right? It is just be Dr. B. But if you... Just tune in. I advise you to rewind. It has been an absolutely magnificent show up to this point. Are uh, we going to continue? I want to show you all an example. I post this video um, on Instagram and um, I was in the sun. I've been getting a huge amounts of sun since I've been in Georgia, since I've been in Atlanta. So I posted this video uh, while I was in uh, while I was in my backyard and I'm like, wow, I see my skin doing something that I haven't seen it done in a while. So I sent it to uh, my brother, uh, Dr. B, to see what he had to say about it. Let me show it to y'all. Hold up. Hold up. All right. I don't even need to. So yeah, so we just we're gonna hold up, we're gonna end it there. Uh yeah, so I sent it to the, uh, Dr. B and I posted it on Instagram because it was just amazing. People was like, I put on lotion. My skin was ashy as a motherfucker. If y'all look, I was mad ashy, so it wasn't no lotion at all. That was my skin. I just woke up and I went to the backyard. I had ashy skin and all that. It was no lotion on there. But I'm just it, 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 I've I've seen it before, but at 
like that, I was like, yo, I got to put this on video. So um, that's what Dr. B's talking about. I just want to give them a reference point. But go ahead, brother. So what happens in, especially in the summer? Yeah. You're picking up all that direct, more direct sunlight. And it's being, it's being stored in your solar plexus and in your melanocytes. You're storing light. When the sun hits the equator on the equinox, taking us from summer into fall, mm -hmm. your energy changes. The battery called the solar plexus, which has been storing energy, comes online. Mm -hmm. It becomes your sun through the fall and winter. Your mm -hmm. inner sun. Inner sun. Your solar plexus, that's why it's called the solar. Soul. It's the solar, and it's the solar system inside you. And that bundle of nerves that's called the solar plexus, plexus is the largest bundle of nerves in the body, and it glows. It's bigger than the bundle of nerves you call your brain. It's in your gut. That's the gut feeling. So when you see that in your skin, it's because you've stored so much light you're beginning to emit. Those are those are melanocyte or, or what they call penaline crystals. Certain people you see this in. Certain people you can't see it in their skin, but you can see an auric field around their head. Mm. If you've got really keen sight and you don't look directly at the person, you just look around the neck, you can see a glow. This mm. is why I was able to, you know, pick out so many artists. I mean, mm -hmm. for a while there, man, I was the man on the West Coast with, with, with music. <laughs> You'd call me mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because I could just look at people and tell. We'd go to an audition and they'd be auditioning people all day. I'd walk in and say, you, 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 you. They said, well, you ain't even hear him sing a rap. I don't need to hear him sing a rap. Mm -hmm. I can feel it already. There's a, there's a cosmic mm -hmm. connection that they already have. I'm listening to them walk. I'm listening to them talk. I can feel the rhythm that they got. Do you understand what I'm saying? I just knew there's a there's an instinct, an inner vibration that we all have once we get out of the loopy commercial thing that we're, we've been caught up in. The loop, which has got your brain, right, which has got your brain like on crack. Let me break it down to you. When we were into soul, soul music, doing things from the soul, doing things from the heart, doing things we love. People had what they call hobbies. You know what I'm saying? This is grandpa's out there with, with toothpicks, making boats and doing amazing things with your hands. And, you know, you're building new brain cells. You're creating new neural networks. You're not sitting around waiting to be saved. You're not sitting around waiting for the phone to come on and tell you what's happening. You weren't, we weren't waiting to be told how to think and how to feel. People today are basically being told what's, what's normal, what's not. What's good? What's bad? What's beautiful? What's not? So what happens is you begin to, you know, you begin to get loopy because the commercials are coming in a certain loop. There's tones in the television, right? There's a frequency that comes around every 40, every, every 40 times a second coming from a television. And there's a very high frequency that we used to be able to hear from television. You know, you used to be able to hear this really high frequency from television. Those frequencies were connecting to us. When they, when, when they realized how they could entrain people using pictures and sounds and loops, that people would just be, you know, dramatized by these loops. They would just get caught up by hearing things over and over because one of the things you, you use to, 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 pro to, to program the subconscious is repetition, the repetition of pleasure and pain. The repetition of certain notes in music, the repetition of certain beats over and over, it begins to change your natural order. You become out of order. You become artificial. You become stuck in a box. You become in a trap. You become entrapped. Unless you're able to think outside of that. So today, you know, with a lot of the commercial music, it's about entrapment. Now, people say, well, you're, you're, you're against commercial music. No. I'm, uh, whatever they're doing is what they're doing. What are you listening to? That's the question. What are you choosing? Are you choosing to listen to these underground artists 
who are doing things like you choosing to only go to the grocery store to get food or are you going to the farmer's market where you got real farmers who put their hands in the soil? Are you listening to music where you got people in the bedroom who have nothing but a guitar or a cello or a violin or a drum set who are developing themselves on a whole nother level using whole brain activities? Because what you'd like to get to is having a whole brain state. Because when you're in a whole brain state, you're using your entire body. You become ambidextrous. When you're ambidextrous, you can't be put in a box because you can see sight behind your eyes. You can hear sound beyond your ears. You can feel feelings beyond your gut. You are connected into the quantum universe. You are connected to the what? The mycelium network inside you begins to dance. And you got to dance away your constrictions. When I was hanging out with George Clinton, this cat was dropping science every moment of every day. I was like, man, what? Can we sleep? No. You know, you could, we got to paint the White House black. And he was talking about how America eats its young. I mean, what do you mean? Now I get it. America eats its young people. It devours them and uses their energy. If they can get you caught up in a loop, you're doing the same thing every day, waking up. Waking up on Monday, right, on Moon Day, and what, counting the days, right, of the week. You're walking around in the days every day, right? You're waiting, you're waiting for the weekend, thanking God for Friday. Because on Friday, you're fried, you're burned out. Then on Saturday, which they used to say was Saturday or Saturn's Day or Satan's Day, right? You get to be free and do whatever you'd like. And then on Sunday, you go to, you know, ask for forgiveness from God and then go back on Moon Day, right? It was a rhythm. And just in case you start getting out of the rhythm, right? All of a sudden, they start changing time on you. They got daylight savings time. What the heck is daylight savings? How do you save daylight? The same way you convince people to listen to the same beat over and over and over and over and over and be listening to words and lyrics that have nothing to do with you. But you're doing it because of the money. And see, some people are doing it because of the money, right? They're getting paid to do this. Somebody's paying them to entrain and entrance the people. But why are you doing it? That's the question. You have to choose. It's not that something is good or bad. It's what are you choosing? You have to listen to rhythm. You have to find out what is your rhythm? What is your piece? Once you understand that music is either poison or medicine. See, medicine means measurement. Medicine means measurement. Even in music, they, they talk about the measures of music. How do you measure it? How fast is it? What is the frequency that it's tuned to? Dr. B, you know what I'm curious about? Um, no, a lot of people talk about the tones and the frequencies of music. I'm curious as to know, and I, I, this is such an amazing show, and I'm glad you have such a thorough amount of knowledge on the subject. I want to know why a whole life, when we call somebody, why did they choose, like, one has a certain frequency, two has a certain frequency, three has a certain frequency. All the numbers have a different frequency. How did they choose this, that the numbers have certain sounds, like, do, 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 do. Do, 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 How did they, how did they come up with this system? They came up with those numbers because see, remember phones used to, they had back in the day, some people still remember the old dial phone. Yeah, yeah. The, the dial, the, um, it was a yeah, dial. The dial, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you understand what I'm saying? Then they yeah. went to phones with numbers and they realized that if you could relate a number to a tone, People begin to attune themselves to that tone, but that tone is inharmonic mm -hmm. and unnatural. You mm -hmm. can't play no music with those notes on that phone. Mm -hmm. not, and not music that's going to be harmonic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even mm -hmm. when you hear it in the song, because you know, every once in a while we would put that in the song. Yeah. You can tell. It ain't in the key of the song, no matter what you do. Right, right, right. right it's right. inharmonic. So once you're getting used to pushing buttons and relating buttons and tones, right, you cannot attune yourself. So you can't atone. Mm. When you can't tune up to the A tone, when you have no oneness within yourself, you become out of order, right? Now, you could cut that off. Like on my phone, I don't hear that. Mm. In fact, a lot of times at night, I turn the color off of my phone and go with grayscale because mm. those colors, those numbers, those tones are in training you. Mm. And you got this in your hand all day in training you. Mm. you. You see what I'm saying? So what we have to do is we have to realize that our thoughts, our words, and our actions are all based on rhythm and tone. Mm. And what, what you're tuned to, what are you tuning into? 
some things you got to tune into, some things you got to tune out of. You've got to learn yeah. to mind your business. What is your business? Facts. Why are we so worried about what the stars are doing? Or, you know, these are not even real stars. And once you start calling these people stars, that's another mind game, man. Cool. man he's a star. He's not a star. The stars is up in the sky shining. They have certain frequencies. That's why, you know, we do a lot of our what we call spiritual work, our deep cosmic work at night. Why? Because the sun is so bright during the day. It's like clouding out the sky. It's, it's like huge. The ego of the sun is huge. So you can't get the frequency of the millions of stars that are out there, which are all suns, which mm. all have different notes, different frequencies. Now, check this piece out. So the sun goes down. Mm -hmm. Your body, your solar plexus has been storing light. You begin to glow. You begin to awaken at night. But they tell you, oh, no, no, no. You need eight hours of sleep. You better go right to bed. Who told you the, that? The uh, circadian rhythm. You, you, who, you know. who, who, who told you? You know, well, the liver only that's, works at this time. That, and that's, when your this time. that's when your body's healing itself at night. You ever had a toothache and that shit come on at night? And you're like, oh, the whole day you be good and all of a sudden at night, that shit just hit you at night. You know what I'm saying? Something happened at night with our body. You know what I'm saying? It changes because it becomes more sensitive. Mm. You become more me. sensitive at night. Talk to him. Doc. Because the sun is so strong mm -hmm. that the sun is right. It's taking over. Mm -hmm. it's, it's covering everything. That type of light is like, that's a different type of light. Versus mm -hmm. the light, the black light in between the stars, mm -hmm. the dark light. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then the, 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 the way the planets and the stars are moving, right? The vibration that they're having, you can hear them at night. Mm -hmm. That's how the Dogons were able to map out the whole. They Bro lay out, they lay out naked yeah. on the ground. Is well, night. how did you night, map bro. the stars at night? At night. You can't do this in the day. Brother you get a Cobb, sunburn. Professor Cabo just talked about that. About exactly. They was up at night so much their eyes turned into telescopes. Telescopes. They could read the energy. They could see. They could see from the oh, other oh, side oh, because oh, all of their maps, all of oh, the Dogon oh. maps are made from the perspective of being at serious to the earth. The maps that the Dogons have up in those caves and those mountains are drawn or made based on having the perspective of being on serious looking here. Looking down at Earth. Now, how did they get that? How did they know about, you know, Sirius B? They know about Sirius A because it was huge. How did they know about Sirius B? And Sirius C, check it out, the one you ain't going to hear about, is our son. Mama Kali said that. Man, Mama Kali just came over here and said that. <laughs> Yo, family, if y'all not, if if y'all don't love this and, and, and just talk and it, it doesn't, and oh man, I'm just excited. I don't know. I'm gonna stop talking. Go ahead. I'm, I'm I, I love to hear, you know. Yeah, go ahead. So Sirius C is our son. It is our son. Solaris. Solaris is the old name of our son. We That's live in a three sun system. Yeah. And they're like, they're like, look, they move like DNA. Yeah. They have a spiral. Everything spirals. There's nothing in the universe that moves in a, in a, in a box, in a square. Mm -hmm. It's all improv, 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 improvising. Mm. Like trees are improvising. They're not going to, the leaves ain't going to be in the same place next year. They left them. That's right. what they call leaves. Let them go. Ooh, talk you got to let some of this stuff go. You're going to do the talk same thing them. next year you did this leave. year? Leave them. Leave. You're going to lie to yourself. You lie, You let, first of all, you allow them to lie to you. Hmm. We want to blame them. No, you allow it. Because sometimes you want to believe so much. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So you just go along with it. So you be lie. Mm -hmm. You believe. You follow the lie because that's what everybody else is doing. When you know mm -hmm. something's wrong, but you're scared, as Dick Gregory used to say, you're scared to speak up, to step out, to stand alone. Solaris mean, or, or so, uh, Solita means to stand alone. 
and be with yourself and listen to the internal music in you and become the miracle. You have to become the miracle maker, but you can't repeat yourself over and over because when you repeat yourself, you create, a, you create a loop. You keep telling the old story over and over. You keep playing the same rhythm on the instrument over and over. You keep pushing the same buttons. You got one rhythm. You know, it's some things that you wouldn't call hip hop. Some of this music coming out of Africa and India, you wouldn't call it hip hop until they start rapping. You hear these beats these cats is playing? And then they rap over. He said, oh, okay, it's hip-hop. But in America, hip-hop has to have a certain rate, a beat. Otherwise, it has to have a certain cadence for you to call it hip-hop, for you to recognize, to recognize it, to agree to that loop. And we become loopy. When you become loopy, you become crazy because you are now not moving forward. You're becoming stagnant. So you can do a simple thing to change everything. Now, as a drummer, I understand timing and frequency, you see, and how to tune the instruments. What you have to realize is you have to tune your instrument so that it fits in the orchestra of life without creating a discord or disharmony. Because when you are doing this over and over, you're becoming disobedient or disrespectful to the laws of nature. So nature kicks your ass. They call it illness. You're sick of yourself. Your heart will attack you because that rhythm that you're listening to, the talk that you're listening to, the cadence that you have, the repetition over and over and over, your body shuts down. Yeah. Your telomeres begin to pick up these frequencies and say, look, man, you know, you, you know, our outlook on life ain't too good. Your life expectancy ain't too good. Mm. So what we're going to do, instead of you living 166 years, we're going to cut your stuff down to 80. <laughs> In the last few years, you're going to be through staring out of a window, hooked mm. up to, you know, mm. 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 you know, because you're you're not atoning. Look, today is what? I think today is Yom, the last day of Yom Kippur or something, right? Where they're atoning. Atonement mm. means to look at yourself, look at your missteps, and go back and forgive yourself, your family, and others for imperfection. Who, who did I say first? Yourself. Yourself. Mm -hmm. By forgiving, forgive. By forgiving yourself, you break the loop right, of being guilty and dishonorable and disrespectful to the universe. Forgive yourself. You can't be perfect here. There's no perfection. Forgive yourself. For what? Whatever. If it, you stole a cookie out that cookie jar when you was five years old, that's still in you because you know you knew you shouldn't have been doing that. <laughs> that's why you snuck and did it. You know what I'm saying? Some things happen in high school after football practice or basketball. You you still in yourself. You feel guilty because religion and all of that kind of stuff and morals and all of that stuff gets stuck in your head. The words of your parents, well, that's wrong and that's a sin and that's bad. So we carry a bit of this guilt we carry a bit of fear that we're going to be punished for these things. We carry a bit of anger because we were lied to, but we're lying to ourselves. So we're angry at ourselves too. Then we have grief, unresolved grief. We don't breathe as deeply because the lungs, they happen to hold on to that grief. So the rhythm of the body is off. Let me let me show you something. Can I can I play something please, for you? Please do. <clears throat> I hope it ain't copyrighted. Is it copyrighted? Yeah, it's I'm copyrighting it right now. <laughs> can, <laughs> can you can you see the drum? I'm playing the drum. Oh, let me uh, hold up, hold up, hold up. Let me. Yeah, okay. brother. All yeah. right, now. So this is a conga drum. You see? Can y'all see it? Let me pick it up so y'all can see it a little bit. Yes, okay. sir. Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. We see it. I'm gonna play a rhythm. <laughs> which relates to what we call the commercial beat or what we may call the 4-4 rhythm, which is a box. It's a square. Yes. Okay? Yes. So listen to this. Mm -hmm. One, two. One, two, three, four. One. One, two. So you got one, two, two three, three, four. four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Because it's a box, it's a square, it's based on a march, mm -hmm. it's based on war, because it's a square. 
it's based on rhythms that came out of uh, Europe, which were based on war. They had to box things in so that they could have an understanding or an overstanding or be able to get involved. You, you understand what I'm saying? It's a march. Just talking to me about that. God damn. It's a march. Okay? Now listen to this. Now I'm going to play rhythm? a rhythm. Yeah. You ready? Yes, sir. What, what rhythm is so I can count? Because you know I'm a musician too, so I can how to keep up. A, I'm going to play a 6-8. Okay. A 6-8 rhythm is one that we could play when everybody in the world and everybody feels it. The 6-8 rhythm changes the way your heart beats. Mm -hmm. And the way energy moves up and down your spine, mm -hmm. the way your kundalini, your prana, your chi flows okay. by counting to six before we go back to one versus a box or a square, which is a prison, which is one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. Now, we can make that feel good because we know how to make soul food taste good when it was made out of chitlins, right? Yeah, so yeah. we could take the, that square and make it work. But when you get into the sixes and these mm -hmm. other rhythms, everything changes. So now I'm going to play oh, a six Dr. Eight. B, Dr. B, while you play it, can you count so we can have a better understanding? Count one, two, you... three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. You feel that movement? See, that's a six eight. Now, when I play, I'm gonna play a four four, right? One two three four. One two three four. One. No, no, I'm still playing a six eight because my body wants to play a six eight. Say. One two three four. four one. Two, three, four, one. That's almost two, all your R and B, all four, your hip hop. One, two, three. Now I'm four, gonna go to a six eight. Two, three, four, one, three, five, six. One, two, three, five, six. One, two, <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, one, two three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, okay. five, six. Yeah. One, two, three. Now what I learned how to do was I learned how to play a 6-8 rhythm over 4-4. Four, four. This is what I was telling you. I would put these, these notes and these rhythms in between the music. So while they were counting 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, I was counting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, on top of the 4-4. Four, four. Nobody mm -hmm. knew what was happening. They'd go into a trance. Mm. Because I was taking their square, their box, and pulling it out of the loop and giving it a rhythm so that your energy can move up and down your spine. Because when you're playing a 4-4 rhythm, even though you could dance and have fun, it's great for, you know, you're out partying. The 6-8 sets you free from the Thunderdome. It's, it sets you free from the prison. Mm -hmm. It changes mm -hmm. your heartbeat. Mm -hmm. You go around the world and almost all the music in from, you know, on the continent, from Asia, almost all those ancient people are playing six, eight rhythms or rhythms that don't have that same four, four. Mm -hmm. But to be commercial, you got to play four, four. Now, they do things like in Lion King and stuff like that. They're going to throw some of those rhythms in there for you to give that African feel. Give it that African feel. Give it that original feel. Dr. B, I want to know what 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 did Earth, Wind, and Fire play? Was they playing four four or Earth, Wind, and Fire was playing so many rhythms, man? So and they, was, <laughs> they was doing so much stuff. I mean, Maurice Wright was Shit. he was really yeah. not from here. Yeah, yeah, and that's why you know he had to leave because sometimes when you when you're when you're trying to stay in a human body with all that, the body can only handle so much before it's got to you got to get to a new Earth suit or leave. But what he was doing with those polyrhythms, he was using multiple rhythms on top of multiple rhythms and making it the new commercial music. He's the one who basically brought a lot of what you call consciousness to the mainstream because he yes, put sir. it in the music. Yeah, yes, sir. You see what I'm saying? Now, each season, you have to tune up. 
If you don't tune up to the season, you're out of rhythm. So if you are stuck in the rhythm of summer, see, look how they got the seasons. They got the seasons divided up in four. Everything's divided up is even. Four. Four, four, you know, four. There's, you know, how many, how many, uh, how many days in a in a month? They they chop it up and mess with it and play with the timing of it to keep you off. There's more than four seasons. Because the beginning of spring is different than the end of spring. The beginning of summer is different than the end of summer. You could easily say that there's eight seasons. Independent on where you are, it, it could be one season all year. When I was in California, it was two seasons. It was raining and it was not. That was it. <laughs> but you're going to tell me what season it is. So now... When I he when I said. go to to be my to to live the life I need to live, you see what I'm saying? I'm stuck in a a loop. I become loopy. What's on the radio is a loop. The commercials come around in the loop. How many commercials are on the radio? How many commercials are on the news? They come around in a loop and they don't stop. They still talking about the 99 cent burger. They've been talking about the 99 cent burger since 19 what? 61, the same 99 cent burger, and price ain't gone up. In fact, you might get two for 99 cents. See, that gets looped in your head, and you think that that's good. Everything else, the prices has gone up. So how cheap could that stuff be? You get it in your head that that's normal. We get it in our head that it's normal to compete, to be in competition all the time. We Look, today, the thing is to talk shit about each other. That's cool now. Everybody's got a problem with somebody else. And if you start getting too successful, oh, they got some stuff they about to throw on you. Oh, you know, well, you know, back in the day, you, you heard he's such and such and don't have no old relationships. <laughs> yeah, I heard that, you know, when he was married back in such and such, you know, and he messed around with such and such and he and she had a such and such and they had a, a secret child. You see, people start talking and they become more energized towards war and destruction and competition than about love. Once you get people in the loop of hate and destruction, you can control them because they're not tapped into the music of the spheres, the music of the stars. They're out of time. They're in a square. They're in a box. They're in a loop. And some people, you know, when they call you what they're going to talk about because they don't talk about nothing else. And it's, it's, it's a thing to talk about how bad it is. But I'm telling you, if it's that bad, it must be this good, too, for us to still be here. You see, because all you need, right, is a, you, all you need. Listen to this. <clears throat> Let me read this. Another notable discovery that is. Uh, oh, wait a minute. No, that's not it. Where is it? Here we go. This is from the book. The Map of Consciousness Explained. <clears throat> Excuse me. 85% of the world's population calibrates under 200. That means your thoughts, your feelings, your emotions, right? They all are calibrated on the scale, which goes from below 200 up to 1,000. Most people never even get past 200, okay? Most people, uh, the world's population calibrates under 200, which amounts for the vast suffering on the planet. Humankind, thankfully, is saved from the self-destruction by virtue of the fact that the minority calibrating at positive levels counterbalances the weight of negativity. Listen to this. For example, one individual at the level of love, which is 500, counterbalances 750,000 people. Individuals below 200 right? 750 individuals below 200 become balanced when you have one person vibrating at true love, which is 500. Do you, if you, if you, if you know anything about math, if 10,000 people on the planet are vibrating at the level of 200 or, or 500, it counterbalances the whole planet. The reason why we're still alive and we haven't self-destructed because there's always at least 10,000 people on the planet vibrating at true love. You don't need a lot of them. 
You only need a few people because you become like a radio station. You become a broadcast station. The rhythm, the sound, the tone, and the frequency that you put out at True Love, which is jazz. Because to be at True Love, you have to be in total improvisation. Somebody comes and cusses you out. The thing today is, you know, they cuss you out. You cuss them out back. Now y'all in a cussing fight. They could turn, you know, might be boxing next. They might be shooting. But when you vibrate at a level of true love, somebody comes at you with some stuff and you just, you're calm. And you're listening to them. And you've got to breathe because your automatic reaction that you was trained to do was to fight back and to play discords and to play bad music. Because they're coming at you with this frequency that's off. And it may not even be true. But you may listen to them and you say, hmm, that's very interesting that you feel that way. I'm going to take that into consideration. You may be right. I apologize for whatever I may have said or done to cause you to have that emotional outcome. Do you know how incredible you have to be to do this? I've had to learn to do this because people, folks, be coming at me. Folks don't agree with this thing. I'm Dr. Well, you're, you're talking all that stuff about love and how the world is crazy. And, you know, we got the hidden hand. And, you know, I got backhand last year because the hidden hand messed up my taxes. It's always some talk about how bad it is. But all you need, brother, is 10,000 people vibrating at the level of true love. So, so yesterday, you went to Health Unlimited. Now, I didn't know when you was going to go. I just mentioned it to you. We happened to meet up there at the same time. Yes. Did you feel the vibration in that store? Changed it. We changed it completely. It was completely. a whole thing. The people were talking <laughs> softly. You understand the smells in the air? They got the crystals in the specific places in the store. The books are in specific places scientifically where the incense are in the corner where the cbd is at no. the, the wall where they have the raw herbs is scientifically set up and harmonized and see this is one thing that we you know i'm going to be talking doing classes on this about being able to do business in a way where the feng shui or the energy or the chi or the prana of your business right it reflects who you are now, you go in some stores and listen to the music they're playing. Why are they playing that? Look at the colors. To, to Look at the, flu the fluorescent lights. To bring a certain vibe into the store. Fluorescent lights blink at 60 times every second. Do you know what fluorescent lights do to your mind? What? It scrambles your brain. Mm. Why all the schools got fluorescent lights? And remember years ago when they was giving out, telling people to get rid of their incandescent bulbs, and they gave out free fluorescent bulbs. Mm -hmm. To everybody, they had boxes of them. I walked out one day on my front porch. It was like 13 light bulbs. I was trying to figure out how they knew exactly how many bulbs I had in my house. Mm -hmm. You know how they knew? You ready for this? Talk to me. The smart meter. Mm -hmm. Did you know the smart meter they put on your wall outside, your electrical meter? The smart meter reads every frequency in the house. It knows how many times your refrigerator goes off and on. It knows how many times, every, well, how many lights you have. It knows what you plug in, when you plug in. Did you know about this? No, no. They came around for free, the electric company, mm. and put smart meters on your phone. Because, you know, it used to be, you know, guy had to come out with a pencil paper and write down the little, you know, those little... It looks like little clocks on your meter on your wall outside for the electric company. Mm -hmm. Well, they came out with smart meters so they could from downtown or wherever, right, through the network, read your electrical bill. I mean, you know, your output. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it's reading everything happening in your house. This is how a lot of people was getting busted for having weed in their basement. Because they saw that they had them lights because those lights that they use to grow weed put out a certain frequency and they have a certain drain. So they were able to tell that look, all of a sudden your bill was this. Now your bill is high. And we know what time the lights come on and what time they go off. And we know what plant you're growing. That's weed. They got weed over there. The cop, cops come busting in. You're talking about somebody told on you. It was the smart meter told on you. Whew. There's a box that you can buy. Go Whew. look online. Do a search. For they have a thing that you put around your smart meter 
that blocks all those frequencies. And they also Man. have this paint. Check it out. They have a paint that you could put on the wall where your smart meter is that blocks the frequency of the smart meter. They have, you know, it's so many devices out there that we need to start using and it changes our frequency. It changes your rhythm because what they're playing with is the way the liquid in your body responds to sound. Check it out. So we talked about with cymatics. Mm -hmm. You can put sand on a table, mm -hmm. put speakers under the table and play certain tones. Mm -hmm. And the sand takes the shape of the sacred geometry of that tone. And mm -hmm. every tone has a different shape that it makes. So there are certain shapes from discords and to notes that are not harmonic with nature, it makes an ugly, you know, signature. It's ugly. It's it's not harmo harmonious at all. Okay, you ready for this? Ready. Those musical notes that put out those frequencies is affecting the water in your body because when you do the same yes, thing with cymatics and put these speakers on a water like a like exactly. a, you, have, you, you have a you know like a, a, a terrarium or whatever with water in it, an aquarium, yeah. you can yeah. see the frequencies on the water. The water begins to dance in mm -hmm. those sacred geometrical shapes. Same thing happens to your body. Happens in your body. The water in your body, right, is terraforming you, which when you terraform something, you're heating it up to help get rid of the natural flow so that you will accept the loop. You'll be a part of the loop. You will accept the loop and be a part of the mainstream sheep and stay in the farm. And you may be deep and study all the books in the world and know all the science. Man, this cat is deep. He knows everything. But is the person able to use it? Most of it's, what we know, a... we are not able to apply because the concepts yeah. are so deep. But when you get down to learning about tone and atoning, Atoning means to tune up on the A tone. You got to learn where the one is. You see, when you count music, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Bootsy's the one that brought us the one. Bootsy Collins. He's the one that basically came to the James Brown band and said, man, you got to put this music on a one. Hit that one a little harder. You start dropping that one. That one needs to hit harder. That's where everybody tunes up to the oneness. Do you understand what I'm saying? When you are at one with yourself and you know where you begin and where you end, what you will do and what you will not do, what you will speak on, what you will not speak on, what you will eat, what you will not eat. Once you have a law and a rhythm within yourself that's unique to you, you begin to put out a certain musical sound and a frequency based on the universe and the universe will guide you to your destiny. Most people are destined to do nothing much but buy a bunch of things. Look, the average person buys things they can't afford using mm -hmm. money they really don't have, right, to mm -hmm. impress people they really don't know. Mm -hmm. Because they're, that's part of the program of the loop that creates illness. And illness is when your frequency is out of order. Why do you think the doctor puts that, uh, 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 he puts that scope on you in a minute to check your heartbeat? So, uh, Dr. B, would, would, since we're talking about sound, we're talking about frequency, we're talking about music, all sound is music, but all music is not sound. So would illness be noise instead of sound? No music, illness can't be music. It has to be what we classify as noise, right? Well, noise... Is neither noise is all of it. It's all noise. Noise just means like, you can hear it. Like but music, yeah, good. Yeah. It's when it's inharmonic. Yeah, it's that, that, when I say noise, I mean inharmonic. That's it's what I was about to say. Inharmonic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's not natural. It doesn't fit in the natural order. Mm. Okay, check it out. I used to go outside and play my drums at mm -hmm. night. Mm -hmm. And you can go try this. If you play your drum one rhythm for more than seven minutes, the crickets begin to come in, get in time with you. The frogs become sympathetic to the vibratory rate that you're putting out. 
-hmm. If you're playing a natural frequency, if you play an unnatural frequency, let's say you go out there with your, you know, your 808 drum machine or your the beat you just made on your computer and it's mm -hmm. all quantized, they get quiet. They stop. Mm -hmm. Because actually they know it's making them sick. It's 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 incoherent. It's not it, the, the language is not right. You see, and you're choosing it because you were programmed to choose it. Somebody told you what to like. You see what I'm saying? The mm -hmm. doctor checks your heartbeat. What do you think he's doing? He's seeing if you're in tune or not. Mm. <laughs> he's checking the tuning. A really good doctor knows the tune of your heart and what that rhythm should be to be natural. It shouldn't be boom, 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 boom. It should be boom, 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 boom. boom. See, that's a rhythm called, you know, that's a rhythm that they play. This, the Maroons play that all day long. In, in Jamaica, in the, in the mountains, the Maroons. Once you understand the heartbeat rhythm, and once you tap into your heartbeat, once you tap into what your heart truly desires by, un, by getting rid of the things that you don't desire, things that you were told to desire, because a lot of what we got is undesirables. They really not, they don't have any real wealth. They only have the wealth that you feel that somebody told you. So you got the makeup, you got the cake up, you got all the stuff on, you drive in the car, you feel as if this is something, but it has no value. Look, diamonds, they say is a girl's best friend. The diamond is one of the most plentiful stones on the planet, which means it really has no actual value but the value people put on it. So they take this little thing and shine it and buff it up and put all those corners and make it sparkle and tell you that this thing is the most valuable thing and it's a girl's best friend. What? A diamond. And people die over those diamonds. But somebody told you. So you need that bling bling so you can look like you really got it going on. You see, it's all a part of your vibration. And see, when you look at what mysticism really is, mysticism is the law of vibration. You can't really explain things that are mystical. It's a vibration. It's an energy. And when you get to a certain place, you know, your breath, right? It matches nature. It matches what's natural. So the, the, the crickets outside are listening to natures that to, to to frequencies that are inherent in nature, so that they can expand and grow and procreate. A lot of what we're doing is we are doing self harm, because certain frequencies cause you to do self harm. They're destructive. So we talk about music, you know. Uh, music that's tuned to what they call A440 is destructive. That's what they tuned the, the, the central note, the, the concert A on the on the pan, piano of the Western world is A, and they tune it to 440 cycles per second. It creates destructiveness. You don't realize it because you know you love the song. Oh man, that's my favorite song. I don't care who it is. If it's tuned to 440, it doesn't have the frequency response that it could have if it was tuned to say, tune it down 1.8% to to uh to A432. That's that frequency brings out more love, more emotion, more feeling. Did you know that if we take people who have Alzheimer's. Put them in a room and pray, play the frequency 32 cycles per second for 14 minutes a day. All of a sudden, the person starts remembering things. People who have chronic illnesses, you put them in a room where they have chairs and everything you could buy now and play. The frequency 32 hertz or cycles per second. Their 
tissue begins to repair itself. DNA repairs itself at 528 cycles per second. C, the note C, 528 repairs broken DNA. You're not going to hear that in your commercial music. You're not going to hear that in your average, you know, what's on the radio. They're not going to play it. Because, you know, we get played by music because we want to be in the commercial ma mainstream. We get caught up by the bling, bling, bling. We want to be in with everybody else and do what everybody else is doing because this is what we do. This is what we listen to now. This is the style. This is the fashion. The word fashion comes from the word fascism. The word fascism is when the, when the army or the, the, the military takes over and tells you that there's an emergency. There's an emergency, so we got to take over and take all your rights away. We're in a state of emergency. Whenever they say they're in a state of emergency, guess what? All your rights is gone. They tell you when to be home, what to do, how much water to drink. You're being rationed. We're in a state of emergency. This is fascism when all of a sudden the military takes over. When the military takes over, it becomes a fascist reg regime. If it stays that way, then the people are under this fascist, fascist regime, and you got one person who runs things. It's, it's, the, it's the Wizard of Oz behind the curtain. Fashion comes from fascism. Look it up. Take the word fashion and look at the etymology. It says fascism because this year everybody's wearing purple. Who decides what people are going to wear? Why is everybody wearing purple? Big hairdos ain't in. You know, you got to have this hairdo. You know, otherwise, you don't look like you fit in the system. So you can't have your own unique song, your own unique music. So your frequency is out of order with nature, but you're happy, which is a happening. Happiness is a happening, right? That happens for a brief moment. It's temporary. Instead of having joy. Joy is when you're tapped into yourself. You're dancing to your own rhythm, your own music. You're cleansing and detoxifying yourself. If you're not cleansing right now in the fall, if you're not attuning, tuning your system up because you got toxins from the summer, right? If you're not doing that, then you're going to be out of tune, right, for the winter months. If you're out of tune for the winter months, the only thing you're looking forward to is Thanksgiving and Christmas. And more people die or get sick between Thanksgiving and New Year's. Why? Because they're so far out of rhythm. Their body, their frequency, what they're eating, how they're feeling, and they're sad and depressed. Because they don't realize that in the fall and in the winter, your solar plexus turns on and you become a musical instrument and you got to make your own song. You got to learn how to dance. Dancing is music too. You got to listen to something different. You got to go off the mainstream. Play an instrument. Dr. B, oh, how come your herbs work different than everybody else's, man? Because I infuse music in them. I'm a musician. I put sound frequencies and crystals, and I put them in, you know, just yesterday I was in the store, right? What was I buying? I bought a big copper picture, a pitcher. Yeah. Why did I buy the copper pitcher? Because I'm going to put the herbal solutions in the copper pitcher, right? You put them in copper, look like this. You got one of these, right? Got it yesterday. Got put it yesterday. Your, put your water in copper. Look at that, man. Got it yesterday. Yeah. And all of a sudden, little pieces of the opera, copper, ionic particles of the copper, which are conductors of musical frequencies, are what? They're put into the, so the solution. Copper helps you what retain iron. Iron helps you vibrate to a frequency so that your blood can carry oxygen. If the frequency of your blood is not right, you can't carry enough oxygen, which means you can't breathe deep enough, which means your heartbeat is off because you don't have a strong composure because you're musically off. Mm -hmm. Your body is an instrument. When you're out of tune, you're sick. You're ill. The one cause of illness is being out of harmony with nature. You're in disharmony. Mm -hmm. You're not joyful. You can't dance your way out of your restrictions because you're caught up in your feelings. And you, you know, people are so sensitive. Mm -hmm. That's so sensitive today. You say anything, people. Oh my God, he said that. I can't believe he said that. 
look what they're saying. They call you a name. You know what I'm saying? You're all upset, ready to go. You know, call News One. They, they called me a name and flipped me off. Who cares that they called you a name? Unless you feel that that's who you are. Mm -hmm. L look how we talk. If you listen to a lot of people today, they talk about how little, you know, this is my little piece of the world. This is my little project. I got this little situation. I'm going to buy me a little piece of land. See, people are into reductionism because they don't know who they are. And a question you could ask people all the time is, who do you think you are? People come mm -hmm. to me, they say, well, Dr. B, I'm dealing with illness. I said, well, who do you think you are? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, what do you mean by that? Who do you think you are? Because who you think you are is who you become. Mm -hmm. And if you've become something that you're not naturally, your rhythm and your harmony is off. You're not totally alive. You're halfway dead waiting on dirt. People are like zombies because they've been through so much emotional turmoil. They've been through an obstacle course of emotions up and down, back and forth. And the rhythm becomes so stiff, they become quantized and they live a loopy life. And they'll do almost anything as long as somebody tells them loud enough and strong enough. And if it keeps coming on tell live vision, that's what we believe. That's the culture. But guess what? 5% of the people are totally, they're not woke. Because you could be woke and still be part of 10% as far as I'm concerned. Woke don't mean nothing to me. You woke. Are you wide awake? Wide awake means that your spectrum is wide. And you've moved out of the anger. Because you're going to be angry at first when you get into the deep studies and figure out what happened to the planet, who did what, who did what to who. You're angry. The corporations and the hidden hand and the, the skull and cross necks or whatever. You know what I'm saying? You, you, you're angry at first, but then you got to move out of that. And you've got to become an alchemist. And you've got to change base metals, uh, the base metals into gold. You have to become godlike within your own self. You've got to realize that the godness is in you. Natural medicine is made of natural elements that create tone and rhythm. Unnatural medicine creates a discord, which cuts off your feeling. And if you don't feel something, you can't really heal from it. Did you know that when they turn off the pain, your body doesn't heal as well? So let's say you had an accident and they turn off the pain because they have to. Right, at least during the first part of healing. But if they keep the pain medicine coming, the wound never totally heals. It always kind of hurts. Because it's the pain signal that tells your body to keep rebuilding the tissue. If you don't feel pain sometimes, if you don't go through pressure, then you can't become a diamond. If you don't go through ups and downs, right? So you got harmony, you got disharmony. So you was in disharmony for a while. Are you ready to come into harmony? So that's why I created medicine music. So people could listen to this music and create a harmony within themselves. By just listening to these musical triages, I take people on a journey. In this music, tuning themselves back into themselves so they can begin to think different because your thoughts are based on what? Rhythm, on frequency on how you sound. There's a book called Three Magic Words. Guess what the three magic words are? Nothing is wasted. This is deep. Everything is everything. Everything can be used. In the art of war, let them bring the weapon to you so you can use it. And, and in the art of war, right, is to not fight. Do everything you can not to fight. Because once you're in war and you're fighting, right, you are actually dying. When you do something to someone else, you're doing it to yourself because your subconscious cannot perceive or conceive of anything outside of itself. I'm going to say it again. Your subconscious cannot perceive or conceive of anything outside of itself. So let's say you're talking about somebody. Like right now, somebody might be talking about Dr. B. They may not like Dr. B. They may have some story about me in the past when I was crazy and wild, which I might have been a little bit. Oh, okay. It, that was him at one point. I've transformed and I'm still changing. We all are. 
But if you have something disagreeable to say about somebody or something, your subconscious thinks you're talking about yourself. And that frequency becomes music and it's a discord. So your heartbeat changes, your kidneys change, your liver frequencies change. And you have taken years off your life by having one disagreeable thought. And they train you in the system to have disagreeable inharmonic thoughts, which is your music. You're out of tune. You're out of nature. So heart disease becomes one of the number one diseases in North America because people's hearts, their rhythm is off. Their sound is off. Their frequency is off. And when you get to the point where cash rules everything around you, it's all about the money, the money, the money, your frequency is off. When you get out of art and total creativity, your frequency is off. I'm not saying don't listen to commercial music. Don't get me wrong. Listen to it. Enjoy yourself. But you need to get some natural music too. Go listen to some jazz. Or you want the best music there is on the planet? Nature. Do you know if you go to the ocean, you hear the sound of the waves? That's called white noise. Every frequency in nature is happening at the same time in white noise. White noise will help wash away the inharmonic, inharmonic frequencies in you and the, the, the ionization feeling that you get from the, the ocean splashing up against those rocks and that fresh oxygen that's coming from that water and the rocks meeting is tuning you up, putting your naked feet on the soil and doing what they call a walking meditation. I'm going to talk about a lot of that on Saturday in my class. I'm doing a class on Saturday. You know, about it's called it all, it all Falls Down. It's part two. I did one a couple weeks ago. This one's going to be more about the music of your life and how to create rhythm and how to live in rhythm with yourself and realize that sometimes you're going to feel disagreeable. Sometimes you're going to feel ill. Sometimes you're going to feel like a failure. But you got to get back up and realize that those ebbs and flows is a part of the sine wave. Watch the way the dolphins swim. They swim up and down, up and down. That wave, you see, up and down, positive, negative, positive, negative, male, female, yin and yang, yin and yang. It's that flow. It's that rhythm. And staying liquid in fluidic space is what creates the harmony for you to go on and become more. But you've got to be under a little bit of pressure. So while you're out on the dance floor, right, y'all hanging out, go get something good. Go eat some real food. Not some Franken foods, foods that didn't even exist until a few years ago. Some of these health foods, I mean, what the heck is this? It was plant-based. It was made in a plant. What is it? Some rubberized vegetables? You eat, it, it, you thought, oh, man, this tastes just like chicken. I'm like, wow, man, you know, you're chewing it, and it's like your body's like, what is this? I'm not saying don't eat it. I'm saying you need to go get something natural. Get some natural leaves, some natural plants. Eat something raw. Eat something, you know, that actually can give rhythm and vibration to your body and help flush that stuff out. Do a cleanse. Get rid of your parasites. But not just your physical parasites. You got to get rid of your emotional parasites. A lot of your emotional parasites, they respond to music. They respond to conversation. They respond to the rhythm of what you're seeing on the Internet, what you're listening to. That becomes an emotional trigger because they're using music and sound to trigger you. I'm saying you can use music and sound to trigger yourself. I'm going to let you say something, Rich, because I haven't heard you in a while. Whoo! Listen. So the stock market crashes in the 1920s. Okay? Do you know what the common metaphor was around the country after the stock market crashes? The common metaphor that everybody was saying, it was in the newspapers, was the country is sick. The country is sick. Go check those old newspapers after, you know, the stock market fell. The country is ill. The country is sick. After five years of that rhythm, of that song, polio hits the nation and the world is crippled. And that was the other one they said, the country is crippled. The country is crippled. The country is sick. The country is ill. Five years later, polio hits the nation. Because that was in the minds of people, because most diseases start in the mind. 
because we're not minding our own natural business. We're minding the business somebody told us to mind. I am saying that once you realize this, you begin to change the rhythm. You begin to learn to meditate, listen to certain rhythms, listen to certain music or no music or find a silent place. Eat foods that are feeding you instead of foods that are eating you because music, food is music. Music is food. They all have a, a flavor. Like the herbalism that I'm involved with, I go out and I listen to the frequencies of herbs and medicines and minerals. I listen to the frequency. It, 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 they talk to me. I didn't study traditional herbalism. I don't know it that way. I know it through music. So everything that I'm putting together, every formula is based on music and rhythm and flow and improvisation. That works for me. It works for you, too, once you start doing it. But you got to stop telling everybody what you're doing. Because when we talk about too many things too much, we, be, we you create a loop. You've got to find a silent moment. You see, in between the beats, there's silence. So when I hit the drum, right? The space in between the time I hit it and the time I'm not hitting it is called the gap. That's important. So if I just go like this, in order to make this beat speed up, I have to shorten the gap. You shorten the gap. See, the gap in your life is the space in between what you're doing and what you're not doing, what you're eating and when you're not eating, what you're hearing and when you're not hearing. The gap or the space is the final frontier where everything exists. That's where you get to change it. Your life is music. We are musical instruments. We're part of a grand universal orchestra. And if you are out of harmony with the orchestra, the universe will start getting rid of you because you're disrupting the, the crickets. You're disrupting the frogs. You go into the, to the woods with all that makeup and all that cake up and all that, you know, uh, cologne. I was telling Excuse me, I was telling somebody yesterday, I said, do you know almost every cologne starts with feces? He said, what? Study colognes. The base of them is usually some putrefaction, some rotten flesh or some feces. That's what you're wearing. A lot of makeup is pork. That's why it sticks to your face. You can cry and sweat and it just sticks. Pork. What do you use? Well, you could use essential oils. They got natural makeups and they made out of minerals and things. But we have gotten so used to the rhythm of fakeness and modeling that we, right, are involved in self-destruction, doing self-harm. We're caught in a sound loop. It's called a trap. And once you're stuck in that trap, it's challenging to get out of it. But cleansing and detoxification within the season, getting rid of your parasites, not just the ones in your colon, the ones throughout your system. Because a lot of times you're choosing music and mates and activities based on that toxoplasma. That one is the mind control parasite. Otherwise, naturally, you wouldn't agree to some of these things. So we've got to set ourselves free. and We've got to do it now. Because between now and January the 9th, everything on the planet changes. We're going to have to have a show, a whole show about that. What's happening between now and January the 9th? There definitely do. We definitely I thought do. you was gone. <laughs> I thought you just left. No, yeah, I, I was on the other computer for a second. I didn't have the mic on that one. But I, I'm, 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 when you called my name, I heard exactly what you were saying. I want to ask you something real quick, Dr. B. Earlier... In the interview, and this the show today has been absolutely magnificent. Early in the show, you said do, and we're talking about do re mi fa so la ti, and then do. Yes, do the beginning of the musical scale. You said in Latin means money. Yes, do like money. Now, yeah, like that yeah. do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that, that's where I'm going. So we're talking about language and. Cymatics is the study of visible sound. We speak a language, and the language that we speak creates a shape, creates an image. And I'm just thinking about slang and ebonics 
And I'm thinking about how the hell did we come up with certain terms to mean certain things? Like, I remember when the brother, a brother named Polite one time said, yo, do y'all know when they say, yo, that nigga salty, there's actual process going on in the body where salt is being secreted when somebody goes through that um, uh, emotion of, of being so-called salty. So when you say dough in Latin means money, how the hell do we as a people who has lost complete knowledge of ourselves figure out to create a word in a language where this you could you could find any word, but we find the word where the Latin means dough. We don't know that shit. You think the person who made up slang said dough means Latin? This is in our DNA. What is going on inside of what music is going on inside of us where our slang represents something deeper than what we really think it means, my brother? Now, you know, they put a little truth in everything, right? A mm. good a good story, a good lie has a bit of truth. Yes. Doe, a deer, a female deer. Didn't they say that? Yes. yes. Doe, a deer, a, a female, female deer. deer. Uh -huh. They just let you know that the first note is feminine. And they've turned the feminine into the cash cow. She is the booty. You say, well, I don't know that. Let me tell you something. Energetically, you do. You don't know it consciously. But in your natural DNA that comes from the earth, that's made of the minerals and is tapped into the entire galaxy, it is it's something that you actually, if you're tapped in, you could feel it. Well, music now is about money. It's about money. Look, you know, the lady was in the store the other day. Well, this wasn't the other day, but the lady was going off on her daughter, who was like maybe 12, 11 years old, cussing her out in the aisle because the girl didn't want to wear these sexy, tight clothes. The daughter said, I don't want to wear that. The mama was going off. You got to get a man out here. You got to be sexy so you can track that money. She was saying this. I wanted to go and say something, but it wasn't none of my business. I mean, what can I say? That the mother now is basically pushing her daughter to a place so she could get money. It's about getting the money. It's not being of a higher nature, being a better person, bringing more love and harmony to the planet. It's about getting the money. It's about your, your, your image on the internet so you can get some money, so you can get some chips, so you can get paid. They put it in there because they knew they have to keep a little bit of the truth in the lie. If you look at music today, people start talking. The first thing they used to say, they said, well, look, you ain't going to never make no money making music. I said, well, I'm doing music because I love it. Well, how are you going to survive? You got to survive. This is a cold world out there. Everybody was against me doing this music. Not everybody, but most people. And guess what? I did it because I loved it. I loved it so much that I loved myself into being wealthy because I did what I loved. When you realize that certain word sounds are connected harmonically and energetically to something other than what you think, you begin to study etymology. You begin to study Latin. This language that we call English is a hodgepodge of different pieces of things they put together. Like, okay, that come from the continent. That ain't nothing that from Europe. Okay. They they put this thing together to get people to have a language, a trade language, they called it. English is a trade language. It's an angle on everything. It's one of the most difficult languages to learn if you're not born here because there's too many things. You don't know what folks mean. I don't know what you mean. You want to come over and chill. Chill means you on my couch now for six months. I got to call the police. And I can, the police won't come get you because they say, well, he's getting mail here. Can't get rid of him because he's getting mail. What do you mean he's getting mail? If he's getting mail, he's a resident. Huh? He's, he was just chilling. You don't know what chill means. We don't always know what want. What's the, the difference between want, desire? When you study language, you realize that it's spelling. And you're putting yourself in a spell. So sometimes you got to study so you can become a spell breaker. Some people read the Bible or the Quran and read them next to each other and all of these holy books, the Bhagavad Gita and all these different books so they can learn to become spell breakers. 
Some folks just want to create more spell because they want to just make money. The 10% just wants to make money off the off the 85% of the blind, deaf, and dumb. 5% are attempting to do something that changes things. So when you say, when you, when you mention dough, on a deep, deep level, on mm -hmm. a universal level, mm -hmm. your spirit knows. And if you mm -hmm. look at it now, it's about the money. When you just start saying ura or aura, which is oro is gold. Ura is feminine. Start the musical notes with what? The feminine. So when I teach, you know, like I'm, you know, I'm teaching some <clears throat> folks right now to play congas, right? Real mm -hmm. basic. You start with your left hand, which is mama. So mama, papa, mama, papa, mama, papa. They automatically want to go papa, mama, papa, mama. Because in this culture, you have been program to put the man first mm. male first god is a male jesus is a male everybody's a male where's the female ain't nobody female did nothing it's all about the men the men the men you were programmed that way but when you start giving more love to the feminine essence when you start realizing that the true love supreme starts in the feminine and that feminine is what everything comes out of. The earth is feminine. Right. It grows out of the darkness, and the feminine energy is black. When you look at the yin and the yang, right, the black mm -hmm. is yin. The white, Blanca, is male. You can't have a male without the female making him. Mm -hmm. So when you get to a culture where it's about the man, the man, the man, the man first, the men, 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 men. men. This is why men basically created fear. Do you think those village women were concerned about the wolf coming in town or, you know, the, 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 the bear coming into the village? No, they were focusing on building strong bonds. They were focusing on creating what weaves the people together, which is love, peace, and harmony. When they were sitting there grinding those grains and things, and they had that rhythm, right? They were all together. You got to watch those with those women. This is a rhythm. This is a drum. This is music being pounded and ground into what? The food. But what happens is some guy comes along. And he decides that he, you know, he feels like he wants to run things. So he starts chatting up the young chicks. He's chatting her up to come up to my hut. You know what I'm saying? I got, I got beaver skins and I got this and I got that. So she's up there hanging out with him versus being down with the elder women, learning about how to knit the fabric of society. She begins to, what, lean towards the man because the man can give her things. He's the provider. He's the, I can protect you from the wolves. The wolves ain't came into the city or the town or the township or the village yet. They never came. But if a man can convince the woman that the wolves are out there and going to come to eat her, she loses her mind. So the man begins to take over. This is what they call the fall of man. When the male energy, all what the man is saying, and him, he's running everything, he knows everything, mm -hmm. then all of a sudden the feminine energy begins to get put down. Because when grandma and them pass away, it's all about them boys. It's all about the guys. Mm -hmm. It's not about the village first. It's not about we. It's about me. Well, mama, mm -hmm. he treats me right. And he, look what he gave me. He gave me this diamond ring. Do you know what this ring is worth? What? He mm -hmm. put a ring on it? See, what I'm saying is this happened over time, but it's going back because you got people all over the world who are changing. So you may say, well, things are getting worse and worse. No, actually, they're getting better because, see, the dirty cream comes to the top. The dirt, the mess is coming up. It's so yeah. much of it. You could just go out and just say, this is crazy out here in the world. Yeah. When I was driving back from the health food store yesterday, the freeway, man, I couldn't wait to get back. It was <laughs> peaceful with you in there in the health food store. I got out of there. I was like, man, people was like, you know, what's going on, man? People cutting in front of you, yeah. flinging you off. You see? Why? Because the people are so agitated. Mm -hmm. It's been so much 
pushing and so much male energy, so much electricity, so much shock and awe, so much pain and so many lies that it's at a point now where guess what? It has to shift back. But it happens only a few people at a time. So mm. we have a brother rich who's rich, right? He's got gold in his skin. The man walks in the store like royalty. He didn't say who he was. I had to tell him who he was. Mm. Folks was running in the store, running, I'll be right back. Where are they going? They're putting stuff in his hands. <laughs> People in the store looking. Because he carries himself as royalty. When we say, when we choose to be royal, not wait for the record company to give you a royalty. Do you know, man, when your song plays on Spotify or any of these networks, you're receiving one point zero zero three percent it's crazy man. so what your boy made the song happy for real do you know how much money he got he had more spins than anybody ever in history mm. it was just under five thousand dollars now if pharrell wasn't pharrell he could produce and do all this stuff that he does how could you survive but they're using your music. The record company gets 50% of every dollar or more. They getting paid. Mm -hmm. So we end up taking trinkets and thinking that they're royalty. You got some handbag that's worth five, six thousand dollars You mm -hmm. need to take that sucker to the coin show or the silver show, get some gold and get some, you know, some silver, trade it in. Because now mm -hmm. you got something that's raising the value. Mm -hmm. Dig up that grass. And plant some vegetables. Mm. That's real royalty. Make love out of the things that are not love. If we focus on how bad it is, we can't create good out of it. We are alchemists. And we now have more information available to us than any of our ancestors. It's about how we use it because there's so much of it sometimes it's overload. Overload, right, right, right. You Google something, man. You know, man, you Google Dr. B, man. There's so much stuff about Dr. B that some of it ain't even true. I'm like, how did this get on here? <laughs> they got stuff on the internet about me. I'm like, what the heck are they talking about? So what I'm saying is you got to tap into yourself. How do you do it? First, you say, I forgive myself, my family, and others for imperfections. That's your mantra. Just roll with that for a minute. Drink you some real good water. Get some spring water. Maybe get you a copper cup mm -hmm. or just some water in glass and drink that every day. Sprinkle some real music played by real musicians. A friend of mine, Kamasi Washington, young jazz musician out of, out of Los Angeles. Amazing. In fact, he's, he's, you know, he's on my jazz album as an artist. Mm -hmm. Listen to him. He's young. He's, I mean, they got a big following. Listen to some other artists who, who just passed away. Pharaoh Sanders, one of the greatest jazz musicians ever. Just, you know, he just, you know, he just graduated. He's got songs where you just, they'll take you into another realm. Mm -hmm. You might say, well, I'm not really into jazz. Listen to something real. Some where's real musicians. Mm -hmm. Go support live music. That's just like going to a farmer's market, eating some real food for a minute. Mm. If you just had some basil growing in your kitchen in the window, mm. sprinkle some of that real basil in your food. Right, right, right. And it brings it alive. It puts enough life force in it. Detoxify your body all the way to the root. Mm. And remember, the fall is the time for you to harvest what you've worked on all year. The way you harvest is you got to go inward into the root like the trees. You've got to get quiet so that you could realize that what you have, it may not be so physical, it's energetic. Have you noticed that the most creative time for most musicians and artists is the fall and the winter? Like right now, I'm so creative, it's crazy. Summertime, I've been like, I don't know, yeah, yeah, I ain't feel, I go in the studio, look around play a beat and I'm like, yeah, hey, I don't know. It's too much distraction. The sun is bright, you know, the beach, the people is out. 
Now when I step into the studio, you create at this time, but we feel that we've lost something a lot of times because of the programming. Like fall, we've fallen down. No, you're rising because the kundalini is rising from your solar plexus. The life force energy is in you once you get quiet and create an idiom and your own natural rhythm and stop talking about what you do and just do it. Find some time to be totally alone, silent, and breathe deeply. The class that I'm doing on Saturday, I'm going to drop a whole lot of little pieces of nuggets of tools that you can use so when it comes springtime, the seeds that you're about to plant, because the people that you thought was running things have run out and run away and are fighting against each other. The, the gate for the farm is open, man. I'm telling you, the gate is open. I haven't seen nothing like this in a long time. They, they, they're not doing what you think they're doing anymore. Oh, man, they listen to every conversation. Look, they got some computers maybe that's listening to certain words. and They'll shut you down if you say certain things. But the people who you think are running things are basically out of time. Because the sun is taking them out. They got zero population growth. They're fighting against each other. The, 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 the stock market is up and down. People are losing their shirt, their pants, their underwear. It's, 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 a, it's wild right now. Because once you create so much destruction, there's nothing else to destroy. Where can you take this now? And the young folks are waking up on a whole nother level. The young folks. Right now, the people born after 1987, y'all are the crystals. That means you know it all, actually. You got to work hard not to know it. You know it. You just got to get out of the brainwashing, or I shouldn't say the brainwashing, the programming. Because, you know, brainwashing could be good. If you could take your brain out, put that sucker on a scrub board, use some good soap, you know, use Dr. Bronner's soap or something, you know, scrub <laughs> your brain, wash all that bullshit Dr. out. Soap. <laughs> <laughs> scrub your brain on a scrub board, take it out, and put that sucker back in brand new. Man, I'll do that in a minute. Mm -hmm. So they make you think that brainwashing is bad. No, you need to do some brainwashing or get focused. Like, you know, I take focus to get focused. I make I sure that me. I'm taking platinum. You see, I got my platinum right here. You got that platinum. So what happens is, is you begin to feed your root, your gut, and you begin to feel again. You have to become the woman or the man or the they that fell to earth. Watch the movie, The Man That Fell to Earth. They tell you the whole story right there, dropping it. You got to learn what is the most powerful energy source there is. It's not out there. It's not about Newtonian physics. It's about love. Mm. It's about loving yourself. You've got to learn love, sympathy, and what? Improvisation. Once you get this down, like I used to be really upset at those people who came here and took over and did what they did until I read the ISIS papers. <clears throat> that book changed my life. Dr. Francis Cress Welsing the ISIS papers mm. because she talked about what happened psychology and what we did to mm. them mm. that nobody wanted to talk about and mm. she talked about the symbols and what was the symbol of the gun and the symbol of the Washington Monument and the symbol of the piss tool the tool to piss with and what the games played with balls was all about chasing testicles and sperm and who controlled the balls control the power because it was all about male energy power, you know when you read the book power versus force where is it at power versus force, you realize that power and force are two different things. You'd like to have power. Force is more, look, they even, look how they got the colors of the book. Mm -hmm. Force is you're making it happen. Power is you're creating the idea, right, and being totally, you know, in your space and allow it to happen. But you got to be ready to recognize it when it happens. That's by becoming more quiet. You've got to be sympathetic to other people's causes. Don't be so mean and ready to jump on some train because they talked about somebody. Mm. Somebody talking about you right now saying you did something. As soon as you start blowing up, have you noticed? You get too big, they're coming after you. Oh, man, do they? Man, do you they? Heard, man, you heard what happened? 
And they yeah. got him on such and such, man. He was found. Blah, they trying to get them on the Rico Act. What? I knew something was off. I could tell because he had a little twitch in one of his eyes. They just like to... my brother. <laughs> just like my brother had that same twitch in his eyes. And he stole all my pennies from my coin, my <laughs> coin thing when I was young. He was, yeah. on, he was on crack. He was a crackaholic. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? A so, crackaholic. Uh, see, I ain't never even heard of that, y'all. Crackaholic. God damn. That's, <laughs> that's a new word. Uh, I heard of an alcoholic and a crackhead. Dr. B said a crackaholic. God damn. See, a crackaholic a is different. See, slang. That's what we were talking about. Slang, y'all. <laughs> a crackaholic <laughs> is living on the crack. Let me break it down to you. Oh, so y'all can have a definition. <laughs> a crackaholic is a person who's they want to be rich, mm. but poor still got them. Mm. They want to be black, but white still got them. Mm -hmm. They want to be up, but down still got them. They want to be mm. good, but bad still got them. They want to be positive, mm. but negative still about. They're living on a crack. They want to be conscious, but their subconscious still got them. They want to be woke, mm. but sleep still got them. They're living on a crack. They're in between worlds. You're cracked. Mm. You're broken. You're not together. Watch the movie Dark Crystal, the original one. Dark Crystal. It was about the black, what, feminine crystal. The black crystal had broken. And when they had to find the piece that broke off to make the world hold again. So you had the disagreeable ones and you had the agreeable ones. And there was a war between them. But when they replaced the crystal piece that was cracked, everybody became balanced. There was homeostasis. So we are like cracked crystals. But guess who cracked our crystals? We did. Stop blaming everybody, looking for them. That was the enemy, and this is what they did to us. What are you doing to yourself? You sitting there talking about what they did to you. What you doing? What you sitting down eating tonight? Mm. Some of that health food you call health food, didn't they? It never even existed 10 years ago. How is that shit healthy? What is it? It don't even digest. But it's health food. Mm. It's franken food. Some of your talk that you have, where is it coming from? You're cracked. We're, we've been... What we've been, what we've been under a spell, but the only person that can get you off the spell is you. Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty was in balance. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. It's the fall of man. Now, egg, which Humpty Dumpty is an egg, is represents new life, new possibilities. But what happened was Humpty Dumpty fell off the wall. He fell out of balance, and he's cracked. All the king's horses and all the king's men cannot put Humpty Dumpty back together again. The mm. only one that could put Humpty Dumpty back together is Humpty Dumpty. The only one that could free the slave is the slave. The only one that could totally make you healthy is by you, first of all, imagining yourself being healthy. Imagine yourself being wealthy. Imagine yourself creating homeostasis and balance. Imagine that you are a musical instrument. Every word, every sound, everything you do is musical. Imagine you're out there on the basketball court. Listen to the feet. Listen to the run. Go if When you watch any sport, listen to the sound of the ball. When mm. Venus and Serena's hitting this ball, you got to hear this. It's music. Mm. And it's ha, ha. That's right. why they it say that. Sound, yeah. You see that sound that they making, right? This messes with the other person. This is like Muhammad Ali whispering in these people's ears. Because the deepest stuff that you can put in a person's head, you whisper it. Mm. It's deep. What it's about deep. the lady? You heard about the lady. Indeed. This man was calling this lady a black uh, nigger voodoo something. This is actually happened. This, this, this Caucasian person was telling this black woman, going off on her, telling she was a black blah, 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 voodoo something. She whispered a couple words and pulled the dial out of her pocket and threw it on the ground, and the man died, had a heart attack. Mm. What did she whisper? He don't know, because he don't know what she said. He must believe in the voodoo because he saw the dial and died. It killed him. Mm. So a lot of times, you are under your own spell, and what you are afraid of is something that you have been entrained to be afraid of. When you get into this place called what? When you become uh, courageous and step into it, you got to get into the shadow. 
See, that's where the disease is at. It's in that shadow. When you realize that the shadow is the symptom, it's not the disease. The disease is only a shadow or a symptom of what's really going on. And a lot of it started in your head, in belief systems. Because we believe when we grew up, they told us what was good, what was bad, who was sick, who wasn't sick. They keep telling you, well, you know, when you get a certain age, you're going to get arthritis. You know, when you get a, you know, your bones start breaking down, you're going to get uh, Alzheimer's. You know, your uncle got Alzheimer's. Your grandfather had it. You probably going to get it, too. Do mm. you know what they call the gene in black people that causes cancer? Oh, you said it on a previous show. Please um, look it up. Willie Lynch? Willie Lynch. Lynch gene. Lynch, Lynch, Lynch. Yeah, yeah. Now, they said it was a dude named Lynch who yeah. named it. I don't, they be, I tell you, you got to put a little truth in the lie and a little lie in the truth. Mm. The gene that black people have that, that causes cancer, they said it's the Lynch gene and it's based on the belief of the family having everything in common. What? Yes, look it up. Y'all on the internet right now, look up the Lynch gene. And they say, that it was based on the DNA, right? Well, I got only got one problem with this DNA issue. Didn't they just break the DNA down recently? I think since 1987, when Supernova 1987 appeared in the sky with the green light, that's what turned on the green laser so that they could see the whole DNA spectrum. Of course, they couldn't see the mitochondria. They didn't see that coming because they can't read the mitochondria because the mitochondria can't be read. It's locked. But when they read the genes, mm. they knew me. the whole gene sequence. They just found that out. So how in the 30s and 20s are they going to tell you that they found a lynch gene? Because they're using the idea of things running in your family against you to hang your ass. The idea of that things run in neighborhoods to hang your ass. The idea that you join this group so you got to do what the group does. You hanging yourself. If the group throws the stone, you better throw stones too. If the group got something disagreeable to say, you better be saying it too. So you join, right? And you get involved with these situations and sometimes your heart's not in it. You just want friends. Oh, I feel lonely. I, I mean, <clears throat> but they my friends. Mm -hmm. Have you looked at the word friend? Please right now look up the etymology of the word friend. Look up the etymology of the word friend. It's going to take you to the word fiend. And when you look up this word that is based on, it says enemy. The devil, the disagreeable, has to do with fighting and war and disagreement. Then my friends, they're part of my friends network. Rock man, I got 250,000 friends. And you can only hit the like button. Ain't that that's a loop within itself? I can only hit like. I can't hit dislike. Well, on YouTube, you can hit dislike. But if it's too many likes, right? If it's too many likes, even on YouTube, nobody's gonna push dislike. Because you don't wanna, you know, you don't wanna buck the system. Because people are like cattle. Because they're caught up in the cattle slavery and the cattle idea and the chattel idea. So what you think is your friends network are people who may be with you, but they're not for you. What are we talking about, Doc? A lot of people are with you. They're hanging out with you. They're down with you. They're like talking about your hair and your gold chain looks good and your car and your house. But they're not for you. They're with what you represent. Some people are for you, but they're not with whatever you got going on with the rest of them folks. They're really with you. They're down. They're for you. You've got to divide, right? You've got to do some, right? We should learn division and subtraction first. Mm -hmm. We learn multiplication and adding first, don't we? No, you need to figure out, right? What do I need to subtract out of my life? That's what alchemy is about. Alchemy is about subtraction. 
It wasn't happens. It just happens every that, time, bro. That, yeah. With you, that happens every time with you. Bro. <laughs> bro. Yo, I swear, with you, bro. your computer stay falling. Bro. What is it about you, Dr. B? Because what I just said you is said, it. You talked about subtraction. I Let's said, elaborate on that. Alchemy. Alchemy is about subtraction. It's about subtraction. Yeah, then my computer fell. <laughs> And isn't that what Prime Source Creator did? Subtract from itself to create to bring about creation? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Dr. Valentine talks about that. Indeed. Powerful. It's about subtraction. Yeah. So when you got here, you got a lot of baggage. You was mm -hmm. born in sin. Whatever they told you that meant. You know what I'm saying? You just got here and you're already wrong. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I just got here. Just got here. Yeah. Little baby. You know what I'm saying? Look, he's wrong. Look at him. It's always crying. It's wrong. But all mm -hmm. the things that you are taught are about the struggle and how hard it's going to be. Mm -hmm. And you look at what's going on and you're listening to the news and you're looking at the people and the people just, you know, it's a thing that you, you come with a lot of baggage. So once you get to a certain age, you're going to have to do subtraction and let go of the things that are not you. You're going to have to do some division because alchemy is taking base metals and turning them into gold. Well, how right. do you do that? The first step is called calcination. When I got this, it blew my mind. In fact, I didn't even, the steps of personal alchemy are so deep. People say, well, I did the alchemy. <clears throat> I can tell the way you're talking. Yeah, I did the alchemy. No, you didn't because you're full of shit. Mm. Your attitude. Look at your mouth. I, 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 I did it all. <laughs> they stole it from me. They stole the alchemy from you? They didn't let us do alchemy on the plantation. <laughs> if you was doing alchemy, nobody would know you was doing it. Let me get back on track. Okay. Calcination is burning off all the things in the metal that are not what you'd like to end up with. So, lead. You ready for this? Mm -hmm. Lead is dark, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's heavy. It has gold in it. Mm -hmm. You have to burn off all the stuff, the dross, and all the things that are not gold. So you might start with a huge rock of lead and end up with a little teeny pebble of gold. Mm. Because now that gold is devoid of funk. Huh? You got to become devoid of funk. You know, you know the song? This is George Clinton again. Mm. You've got to be ready to cut away to do the circumcision of the heart. All the stuff that's in your heart that's not you. The fear, the anger, the, 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 you know, the divorce. You're talking about, yeah, I went through a divorce. How many times you've mentioned this divorce? Mm. How many times you mentioned the fight you've been through? Mm. How many times you mentioned a disease? You, yeah, you know, long time ago I had cancer, but I cured myself. And you keep talking about the cancer, the cancer, the cancer, the cancer. It's coming back. Because within two years of you getting rid of an illness, it comes back because you keep what? Building upon it. You keep putting more energy into the idea of it. But you have to learn to what? Divide yourself from your old self. You've got to divide yourself from what you call these friends. And you, probably only one of them is a, a, a real person that you could really depend on. If you got a hundred friends and you find one of them that you could really tell almost <clears throat> anything, one person who is a confidant, not just a, you know, because you got folks who is, you know, that's my comrade. That means that y'all like something together. Y'all go play pool together. But after pool, y'all really ain't cool with each other. You know what mm. I'm saying? Mm. Then you got your constituents. Those are people y'all don't like something together. I'm a, I'm a Democrat. They mm. Republicans. Mm. See? I'm a constituent. That means you all don't like something. But if you can find one confidant, a person that's not going to talk about you behind your back, 
Don't tell me you love me, Dr. B, and you got some gossip you talking after under your breath. Oh, we love you, Dr. B, but you know, such and such and such and such and such. This is how we do. We love our heroes, but we got some shit to talk about them all the time. We always, when the person gets to a certain level, how do he get that house? Did you see that house he was living in? How do he get that? Be mad at the preacher because the preacher living in the big house. Why are you mad at the preacher? I mean, what, what do you, I mean, y'all, he asked y'all to buy him an airplane and you bought it for him. <clears throat> now, what business is you not in the church? Why you care about that? Hey, he taking their money. They gave it to him. Ain't none of your business. Where's your garden? Did you plant some seeds? Did you breathe today? Did you do some, what, drink some good water? Did you make love? And when you make love out of the things that are not love, this is the ultimate alchemy. Because there's a lot in the world that's not love. It's the opposite of love. Mm -hmm. There's a book. What, what is the book called? The um, uh, I just got the book. Let me find it. You know, I keep buying books because people borrow them, and I, you know, and they disappear. The Mastery of Love. The Mastery that, of Love. That's the dude who wrote the Four Agreements. Oh, um, this book right here. When you realize mm -hmm. what love is. You're going to realize you've been a hater most of your life Ooh. because you're involved in what relationships. Ooh. A relationship means it's closed. It's a ship. There's contracts with it. Mm -hmm. I'll love you. If you buy me that ring, I'll mm -hmm. love you. If only if, and if you cheat, I don't love you no more. Mm. You know, when I became a minister years ago, right, people want to know what I marry. I said, I ain't marrying nobody, and I ain't preaching at the church. I just got mm. this paper because I needed to get, you know, the hookups. You get hookups and things, you know, discounts. Mm -hmm. But they mm -hmm. gave me, you know, the ministerial degree. <laughs> I got, that's my doctorate is in metaphysics, you know. Mm. Well, Dr. B, will you marry me? No. Why? Because y'all lying. What do you mean? We love each other. We want to get married. I said, are you evenly yoked? They said, well, yeah. We've been together every day for the last two years, and everything is perfect. I said, okay. Are you ready to really deal with what's real here? Mm -hmm. And be able to say the truth? Mm -hmm. Johnny, or Janie, do you take Johnny to be your lawfully wedded husband? I do. Even when his stuff don't work no more? Dun, 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 dun. Mm. Even when he loses his mind, mm. dun, 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 dun. even if he gets busted and goes to jail mm. trying to feed the family, do you still love him? Even if he slips off the farm and out somewhere, you know, drinking milk through the fence in somebody else's neighborhood. <laughs> He used to talk about that. You know, he's out. He's drinking milk through the fence. What was that about? <laughs> I was. Where you, where you come up with this shit? <laughs> you heard about him? He got caught. What he got caught? <laughs> then he was he was out drinking milk through the fence. I was, uh, I was young. I used to say, "What does that mean?" Oh, man. drinking milk through the fence. Wow, that's a that's an old school saying. There. Do you love Woo. the person? If you truly love them then there's no contract. Mm. If you love only under a certain contract, then that may not be love. That's like a lot. And you got all these demands. Mm -hmm. You don't want the man to be gone. for the, Where's he at? He out with his friends at the pool hall. I've had heard my, my family members talk about how it wasn't good for you to let that man be out at the pool hall with his homies. Y'all married now. Y'all got kids. And you know what could go on at the pool hall? They drinking, they smoking, and it's them girls, they, them girls. They down at the pool hall. You better go down there and get him. She come marching up in there because her friends got all pumped up. This is supposed to be love now. Grab him by his ear and pull, make him go home and sit down and watch the television and sit there and watch love and marriage on television over and over. And all of a sudden now his arteries is clogged and he's got calcification of his heart and he's taking blood medicines and his, his blood pressure is high and his mind is low and he's just staring there and he's sad and he's broken as a man. Because what makes a man testosterone get strong is when he's away from the woman for a while. What? Yes! 
Talk to him, Dr. B. <laughs> Do you know that your testosterone, oh shit, brothers, stops developing if you are around a woman too much? What are you talking about? It is you being oh, oh away. My, oh, I hope my girl listening to this. I hope she listening to this. Uh, you don't want her to listen to this guy. I don't want to cause no problem in your personal <laughs> life. I need you to still be able to have the show. You know, you did the best stuff. That camera fall at one time. The camera might go down one time. And it ain't the energy of the universe. Your woman then came in there with a broomstick. Broke that screen. But you got an Apple computer or a PC. The PC, you can get another one quick. Apple, you're going to need to have another job to get another Apple. <laughs> Good, man. When a man is with a woman too much, <laughs> this is science. <laughs> he doesn't make as much testosterone because he doesn't need to. It is him being away, fasting from the energy of a woman that says, hey, you're alone. Let's make some testosterone. When a woman is with a man too much, estrogen begins to overflow and then what happens is her testosterone comes in to try to it's like a war that goes on it is the separation of the two for certain periods of time it's a fasting period where the woman's estrogen stays high and the man's t testosterone still stays high this is why when people get married they be married for a long time the man just be looking like you know, I mean, he married her. He's got a promise. You know, he's there's been witnesses and he can't go wrong. You got to do right by the Bible. You know what I'm saying? So he just rape waste away. If she allows them to have space, let him go fishing. Or on the camping trip with his homies. You worried about girls coming. If you bad enough, ain't no girl can take him. Now, if you don't, you know, some of your duties ain't the same as they used to be. Some of your, I don't want to go there. Anyway, the same thing with a woman. Women and men have to be away from each other to create a stronger bond between, between them. There is an energy that's between particles in the subatomic space that holds two particles together. It's called the gluon state. It's a magnetic field. Well, they don't. Well, it's not really magnetism, but there's an energy, a force, what they call a weak force, which is actually really powerful, between two particles that keeps it together. So all pieces of granite, right, are sticking together with other granites. They have this bond, this what they call, you know, this uh, this, this 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 affinity for each other. You see, so that affinity becomes strong when there's pressure put on it. There's pressure by the universe. When you put pressure on something, when you're away from something, like when you're fasting, mm -hmm. what happens? Your body eats up inferior matter. They talk about this whole thing with, you know, what they call it? Periodic fasting. What's the new thing they got now? Intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting. What the heck is that? What the hell are you talking about? This professional in the store, you know, you know he's a nutritionist. He says, hey, sir, I, how are you? Oh, listen, I have this program. Are you, are you into intermittent fasting? I don't. They don't know what I know. You know, I just say, well, no. I, what is that? Well, you know, it's when you don't eat. You know, till a certain time of the day, and your body gets to burn off. Blah 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 blah. And this creates blah. He's talking. I'm sitting there listening. Intermittent fasting was not a thing. It was a time of year, sometime when you didn't have no vegetables, nothing to eat, or mm. you didn't catch no food. Mm. So the body, right, would begin to what? eat inferior matter, and the body was made to go through times of lean, when you didn't have anything. Your body was made to do that. You could go three, four months with no food as long as you got enough water and your mind is focused, but if you're focused on fear and starving, you starve. Do you remember the story about the frogs? <clears throat> the only frog that lived was the one that focused on getting out of the hole. The other frogs kept talking about, we're going to die. We're going to starve and blah, 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 blah. And they died. But once you focus on living the highest vibration, 
And once you are gold and you are the aura, once you are the music, you're the frequency, nothing could separate you from the things that you love. Nothing could separate this relationship or this relating if it's strong enough, if it's based on times of intermittent fasting in the relationship, intermittent fasting with food, intermittent fasting from all kinds of things. You can't get looped up in a loop because now the average relationship today, it don't last that long because it becomes too loopy. It becomes boring. Mm. I'm bored. I don't. I can't tell her I'm bored. It's gonna hurt her feelings. Then she ain't gonna let me see the children. You hear about that? Mm. She ain't gonna let me. You know. You know how? I, I guess you know. We broke up, and when people break up, they got drama. It be drama from that point on, because the the, the, the lie that y'all told that when standing on that podium is it called the podium? What's it called? The altar? What what they call? Altar. It? The altar. Altar. Y'all is telling the altar ego lie. See. Mm. The truth is you need to tell the truth. I'm only going to be with you if A, B, and C. Mm. The minute your sexual organs shut down because of calcification, of eating too mm. much meat and drinking milk and eating cheese and watching too many of the same stories and dancing the same beat, I'm leaving. Mm. Tell the truth. Mm. Mm. Tell the truth about it. If a person sometimes gets sick, the other one leaves. They can't deal with it. I can't deal with it. I don't know what to do. Mm, that's because your bond is not strong enough. And sometimes mm. the person is sick because there's not enough true love. Love is life organically vibrating effortlessly. You don't have to force anybody to do it. You don't have to force me to be with you. Mm. I'm coming home. Shoot. You know what's happening at home? But I'm mm. going out now. I'm going fishing. I'm going mm. picking rutabagas. I'm going to the farm with the homies. I'm going down to the gold exchange to take some of this cash that's dying, that's losing all of his energy to get some gold and silver. I might not be back till Monday. But where are you going to sleep? Don't worry about where I'm going to sleep. I'm going to go get me some testosterone. Build my testosterone. When I come home, it's going to be wild up in here. <laughs> but if I'm too close, if there's no gap, if there's no space, there's no final frontier. So truly relating is giving each other space. If you're worried about your woman and you texting her, or she went out, right? She went mm -hmm. out with the girls and you texting her every few minutes to see where she at. You are y'all not that's not love. Mm -hmm. Facts, yeah. I was with a sister one day, she was doing a session with me. And let me tell you something. Her phone was buzzing, buzzing, buzzing. buzzing, buzzing, buzzing. She said, hold on. I can, that's, that's my man. I can, yes, baby. I'm here with Dr. B. Okay. Dr. B, can you say something to him so he'll be calm? Hey, how you doing, brother? Yeah, what's, what y'all doing up there? We're here doing a session. You know what I'm saying? She's having some situations. He's upset. Come to find out. He don't want her to get healthy. Do you know why? No. Because their relationship is based on illness. Ooh. If she gets healthy, she might go out and get another man. Ooh. If he gets healthy, he may go find a young girl. So mm. even he's got high blood pressure, heart disease, and kidney stones and a bad back. Mm. I, I, I'm with that. I'll take care of him. Take <clears> him to his doctor's appointments. Because if he gets healthy, he may leave me. He may not want to go to Sizzler and Outback Steakhouse and, you know what I'm saying, and all these other places, uh, Black Genghis and eat, you know, uh, sushi and, you know, get the sushi bug and the parasites that's down at the, down at the food lot on a Sunday. We going down to food lots to eat. You know, you can eat all you want. A smorgasbord. What the heck is that? You can eat as much as you want? How cheap is this for? Where they get this food from? You can eat as much as you want. And how much do you need to eat? And that food is just open. It's just sizzling in pots. This is love. This is what we do. And once you sometimes become healthy, you change. If you were ill, and you do like, you know, my elevated total body program and a couple other things, and all of a sudden you start taking the classes, listening to Brother Rich, doing the exercise, listening to other people who are giving you information that you can actually use, you're going to change. And sometimes that changes your relating with the person that you were before, right? You did the alchemy. 
because alchemy is division. Mm. That means being truthful and transparent and saying what you don't like. A lot of times you can't tell your mate what you don't like. You got to go along with it. Or there might be something you like. You can't tell a mate, well, baby, can you, you know, <clears throat> I, I, you know, I got this thing I need you to do. She, what? Where you get that from? You must have got that from your, no, I ain't doing that. You're not going to do it? But you you should have told me that when we got married. I did. We used to do it back in the day. Well, that's when we was in college. It was different then. We was on weed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was different then. Well, we stick together based on being inharmonic and not having music anymore. It's sadness. It's depression. So the mind begins to deteriorate. You begin to get calcification in the brain. I told you, if you listen to the frequency 32 hertz, it's lower than the lowest note on the piano. You can only play it like on a bass guitar if you get, you know, there's ways you can get there. The lowest note on the piano, I think, is 40 hertz. It's not quite low enough to create that healing vibration on purpose. But if you get to 32 hertz of frequency and play it around people who are having brain and cognition issues, they change. Mm. So I put 32 hertz in a product called Focus. We put speakers around, these special speakers in these magnetic grids and put a Faraday cage over it. People start taking Focus and all of a sudden they can remember again. They can remember what they love. Certain frequencies cause you to relax. So there's frequency 432 hertz. That causes you to relax into being yourself. So we put that in a product called Heaven on Earth. Helps you remind you of who you are. We got another product called New Life. These things are frequencies. What, what you got there, bro? Heaven on Earth keeps you calm. You're going to need that, especially if you're away from your lover or fishing or out on the farm for a few days and you ain't been home. You're going to need to give hey. it to her. Put that in some shot glasses. Man, because that's... today, people are afraid of losing. They're afraid of losing what they have. So they have already lost it. If you're afraid of losing, you've already <clears throat> lost it. Because you're lost in space. If you're confident, and you say, look, baby, you going, you going, what you going, you going over to the farm with brother Eugene? Yeah, you know, we going over there to, you know, to, you know, to pick some vegetables and things. I'm going to be gone. I'm going to go over there and learn, and do a little workshop. I'm going to be gone for a few days. Oh, but I love you, baby. Mwah. Bring home some rutabagas. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's beet season. We need beet because beet's got a lot of iron in them. Mm -hmm. But if you're like, oh, no, 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 no. Wait, wait a minute now. Who, who else is going to be over there? Is it going to be some girls over there? Them girls, well, who is them girls? The little young girls be at the farm too. Uh uh, I seen them. I seen brother Eugene at the farm and he had them young girls teaching them how to grow vegetables. You ain't going. Or the same thing the other way around, where the man is worried about other beings. Not, it ain't even men today, it's people taking what you think you own mm. when you don't own it. Mm. But once you do the alchemy, and you get rid of the things that are not you. You get rid of the baggage. That's why when you know I always say travel light, because a lot of the baggage you have is not yours. The baggage is these frequencies, these containers, these thoughts, these boxes in your subconscious basement that are inharmonic, and they're making your music sound bad, and you're sad, and you're depressed, and you're angry. When you begin to do the real alchemy, the music gets beautiful. The mm. rhythm, you get out of that, that, that slave beat, you get out of that march, that, that military march, and you get into that 6 8. You're in the kitchen. You're in the kitchen. You're in the bedroom. Try that in the bedroom. Try a 6 8 rhythm while you're in there doing your, your loving things. <laughs> Learn that six, count six, count six breaths. Mm. Or get to the uneven numbers, the sevens. So you got to get to the ones, the threes, the fives, the sevens, the nines. See, those are the odd numbers. The odd numbers are the God numbers. 
the odd numbers of God because the first name of the European God was what? Odd. Odin. Odd. Odd. It's odd. The odd numbers are the God, are the God numbers. The even numbers are, this is man-made stuff that keeps you boxed in. So our mathematics is backwards once we do the division. So take this time going into fall and leave the leaves. Let the leaves fall. That's why my class, you know, it's, it's called, you know, at, what's it called? It all falls down. It all falls down is about you leaving the stuff that you no longer desire and creating new music, new vibration, so you can dance your way out of your restrictions. Because what's going to happen this spring is going to take you to a whole nother level if you're ready for it. Most people are going to wake up this spring and nothing going to change. They're going to go through the equinox and spring equinox and everything is going to look the same. Mm. Because they haven't changed themselves. As I'm speaking to you now, I've changed. I changed after I met you yesterday, brother. Mm. I saw you come in the door. I saw this light. The, 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 the doorway lit up. I'm about to leave the store. I've been in the store two hours because once I go in the health food store, they you know they got me teaching classes and talking to clients because I love being mm -hmm. and helping folks. Mm -hmm. But when you and I connected, something changed. I had never met you physically. Right, we right. physically met. We exchanged right. energy. I changed. When I left the store, I had to sit in my car for a while and get myself together mm -hmm. because I realized the love that was inherent in our relating. I had love for you, which means that I love your family. I don't know them, but I love them because they're a part of you, all of your family. And my thing is to help you do whatever you're attempting to do. All of my clients, all of my friends, all of my family, they know the only thing I'm going to talk about is helping. Mm. Mm. We got so many things to say right now. We got so many things to say. And most of the things that folks are talking about is not helping. Mm -hmm. I go silent. I don't talk about that's what they do. Mm -hmm. Who are you? Who do you think you are? If you think you Mr. Big Stuff or Miss Big Stuff, be it. But do the alchemy, which is what? Division. Find your music. Find your rhythm. Create your own. That doesn't mean you can't go out and do some of these other things. But be in a creative space right now and let the leaves fall. And in the Powerful. springtime, boom, you're going to get a big surprise. I want to share something uh, before we, you know, what we're going to do is as far as the Q&A, and I see people in the comments, they're like, Brother Rich Tut, y'all say the same thing every show. This is how I listen. I listen attentively. And when I listen, it sounds like I'm in a trance, but Y'all say the same thing every single, y'all said the same thing every show for the whole year. And it's the same thing, family. This is how Brother Rich listens to his guests, either get with it or, you know, whatever, whatever. But I want to show this. Um, this is absolutely amazing. Uh, Platinum Life Monatomic Elixir Plus Gregory Reserve. I had the first one, right? Which was great. Dr. B sent me this one. This one is super duper, yeah. Super duper strong. So I want to give a shout out to this product right here. That this is an amazing product. And I showed this one because I had this one in front of me. The Heaven on Earth. This is a real good one. And I seen uh, people asking about where to buy them from. Obviously, not for me, this brother right here. Tell the people where can they buy these amazing products from my brother. ElevationTime.com. ElevationTime, T I M E.com. Go mm. to the website. It's all new. We had to restructure everything because of Brother Rich. You see, so we, 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 we're hitting a different frequency now, but the products are there. We don't mention diseases mm. on the website. You can't do that, but we're offering you the product. But what you have to do is read between the lines and do a little research. And if you really desire, you know, some some direction. I'll take a few phone calls when I can. And if you're dealing with something major, then there are kits we can put together for you. Mm. But the main thing is go to elevationtime.com. And this is the time when a lot of folks are choosing to do the elevated total body program mm. or the total body program. 
The total body program is for your average systemic parasites. That's your average, not just colon parasites. Those are not hard to get rid of. There's a lot of folks who can help you with just the colon parasites. My specialty is the systemic parasites. They live throughout the system. It's more challenging to get to them because you have to change the vibratory rate of the entire system. And most herbs can't do that in, a, in and of themselves. So we also have the elevated total body program. That one is dealing with the systemic parasites and the superbugs. Toxoplasma, the brain disease, you know, when it causes brain disease. There's another one that lives in the, in the, uh, uh, the pancreas, the pancreatic fluke worm. There are also a lot of parasites that are coming that, that are basically weaponized from war. They're war weapons. They're biological weapons that they use that they made in the lab that got out and they're in the atmosphere. You know? It's like it's like crashed again. Huh? No, it didn't crash. Like, the people say it's like, bro. What are you talking about? I gotta see this. They they this happen every time. I got to call my guy. <laughs> they in the chat like, say, the, yo, bro, listen. After you go in, it's a wrap. You already know how this goes, doc. If you go in uh, and you say your site, it's a wrap. Bro. You, you know how this goes. Yo, you know, we're we going to do a part two also next week, family. <laughs> family, the site will be <laughs> doc. You see doc's face. Doc's like, hold up. How does this happen again? We Did reconstructed be- everything, man. We, 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 I gotta call my guy because he said, Oh, it's not gonna happen now. We, oh, we fixed man. it. Wow. But anyway, yes. So, you know, it's usually down for what, 20 minutes, 25 <laughs> yeah, minutes. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not gonna be long. Be yeah, patient. It's, not, it's, it's, you know, let, let's learn to just, it's a little humor in it. It's not humor, but it is humor. Uh, I'm glad that y'all rushed to the site. Uh, if you went to the site and it's not up, it will be back soon. But what I want to tell everybody is that um, because we didn't get a chance to go in the Q&A and, and our conversations are so profound and Dr. B could go on so thoroughly on one or two questions, we're going to do a part two next week. D- guaranteed, we're going to do a part two next week. So we're, uh, we're doing this, what, what's, what's today, uh, Thursday? We'll do part two probably Wednesday of next week. But, you know, I'll inform you all, I'll let you know. But, um, man. Be patient uh, with the website. Yeah, be patient. Yeah, Dr. B. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Before we get and it, the go Master ahead. Tonic is back. Dr. B, Master Tonic Reserve. People say, well, well, Dr. B, how come you don't say too much about this? Because this is for spiritual protection. I didn't get that this, one. I you didn't get, get this one. one? It was a little teeny bottle I put in your first package. You probably drank that stuff down. I gotta I'll send you some. This yeah. one is like, is I only make a certain amount of it because of some of the ingredients I can't even get anymore. You know, Ooh. there's a your special pinyon resin that we used to get from a tribe in mm. California that you know it's a whole situation out there. So yeah. this is all different resins that help to seal up your auric field. It's called the Dr. B Serious Master Tonic Reserve. This is what I use when I go out in the world. Because there's so many energies hitting you from everywhere. I don't care how spirit you are and how many meditations you do. There's so much energy right now because of where we are in the universe. You've got to seal yourself up. You see, so <clears throat> we have the master tonic reserve. Your nervous system is under attack. Why? Because there's so much distractions. That's what the heaven on earth is about. It helps to sync up your sympathetic nervous system and your parasympathetic nervous system and mm-hmm. also tone your vagus nerve. Your nerves are being affected by everything. No matter how much meditation and work you do, you've got to do something to get your body to be in a place of homeostasis. So we use these products to do that. Mm. And as I was saying, that elevated total body program, it has the mushroom tonic in it. Mushrooms, certain mushrooms made in a certain sequence in a program, they can find DNA that's not yours. Mm. Now, there's a lot of mushroom products out there. Mm -hmm. But did you know if you boil mushrooms, you only get a few of the constituents. If you put the mushrooms in cold water and leave them in the moonlight, you get another group of constituents. Mm, mm. If you take 
the mushrooms and simmer them at a certain temperature, can't go over a certain temperature, you get another group of constituents. If you dry them out and powder them, mm -hmm. you get another group of constituents. But you, in order to pull them all together, you have to use an emulsifier. Because now, you know, it's, you just, you know, people, there's a lot of mushroom tonics out there. And I look at them all and I'm like, the way, how was this processed? Mm. I learned an, a whole ancient way from, a, you know, a, a, a brother who was a chief, Chief Little Bear, about mm. these mushrooms, about the mycelium and how you can, you can't just take one mushroom and just take it. Mm. You have to process the different parts of it and put it all back together and you hold it together using a uh, an emulsifier. And I'm going to give you something for you people who are in the herbs. Mm -hmm. How do you take herbs that have a hot nature and a cold nature and get them to bind together? How do you get herbs that are bitter and sweet or sour and pungent to come together and work in one formula? One herb. Licorice. Why did they come out and tell the people that licorice was bad for your liver? This was years ago. Mm. They tried to take licorice off the market. Licorice. Mm. They were telling you the truth. They said licorice is bad for your liver. If it has been extracted with alcohol. Mm. If you extract liquor with alcohol, it is no longer an adaptogen. Adaptogens are herbs that balance themselves based on what you need. They adapt. They're called tonics or tonifiers. They create musical frequencies. I need you to hear me. The tonic herbs are called tonics or toners because they create musical frequencies based on what frequency is not inherent in your body. My specialty is adaptogens. So people say, well, Dr. B, how come you don't use golden seal? Because golden seal is not an adaptogen. It comes from a plant that is an adaptogen. The original is what? The Oregon grape root mm -hmm. and, and barberry. They took Oregon grape root and barberry and crossed them together to create golden seal. It's very powerful. I'm not saying don't use golden seal, but golden seal is like dropping an atom bomb. Just blow up everything. Boom. So it will destroy your friendly bacteria unless you're taking a, 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 a probiotic that's at least 24 to 34 you know, strains. And you got to take it over a long period of time. So we only use golden seal if it's an emergency for a very short time of period, to time, period of time. Mm -hmm. Most herbs that you see people taking in the North America pharmacopoeia are not adaptogens. The Indians and the Ayurveda and the what you call the Native Americans or the indigenous people of North America and the people of Peru and South America and Central America, they specialize in adaptogens. North Americans don't specialize in adapt. Europe don't specialize in it. They just want to kill it. Kill it all. Blow it all up. The adaptogens, which are tonics, are intelligent herbs. They balance themselves based on your body and your consist consistency. They create harmony where there's not harmony. They create harmony because illness is inharmonic. Mental yeah. illness is inharmonic. Did you know how much energy it takes for you to talk disagreeably about another person? A lot. So your voltage, you have a certain amount of voltage in your body. Mm -hmm. So let's say you, you know, your body could make, you know, like the, the equivalent of a hundred light of a hundred watt light bulb. Mm -hmm. Do you know the minute you talk about somebody else disagreeably, you go down to one watt. Mm -hmm. Your heartbeat changes. Mm -hmm. You talk about them and what they did and the gossip that you heard and who hurt who and it's... who did something or what's in the news. Do you know your voltage drops? You ready for this? Yes, please. The reason why it drops because there are there's there are these beings. Their thing is they drink the disagreeable inharmonic energy. That's their food. 
So when you go into a disagreeable place, these beings, which are not really physical, they drink that energy. That's their food. So why do you think you're being triggered each day to gossip, to talk about people, to talk about things that you don't have no knowledge of, to get upset because you heard something happen and somebody did something and you're ready to argue and you're ready to fight? <laughs> and you need to be right. That's another thing. I need to be right. People will argue because they need to be right. They need to be right. They don't even want to be happy. They just need to be right. They just need to be right. So I let them be right. You're right. Yo. They say, oh, I'm right. Yeah, you're right, man. You're right. Right don't mean that you're correct. That mm -hmm. means you're righteous in your own indignation and your own beliefs. I'll let you be right. But that there is a group. There is these beings. And I don't want to get deep into this because we don't need to, you know. I, I, I want to on the next show. These beings. And how I found out about this is crazy. The next show. Their thing is to create. It's called terraform. They heat terraforming is when you heat an entity up <clears throat> and change the environment and cause the beings to do self harm. These beings use the energy you're not using. Nothing is wasted. Remember the three magic words. Nothing is wasted. What you're not using, something else uses. You're allowing yourself to be used. You're allowing yourself to get upset. This folks still upset about something happened 30, 40 years ago. They can't get over it. Because it's too high. They can't get over it. It's too low. They can't get under it. Because it's hard to let it go. Until you learn to let it all fall down and let it go and release it. There's a way to do it. Yeah. There's a process. Do so, Dr. B, I, yeah. I want to save because I, I got some amazing questions and directions I want to go with this conversation. So I want to save the rest of this for the next show. Yo, before we and before I say what I'm about to before I end it, um, somebody somebody in the chat said one time I was doing I think I was doing a show at Blue Pill. We were talking about emotions, and they said emotions are intergalactic crack. You know, like you know how addictive crack is. It's emotions, the intergalactic these entities. This is crack to them. Our emotions, fear, drama, stress, uh, 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 anxiety. This shit is crack to them. They man, they get high like a motherfucker off these emotions. So I I'm definitely, gonna, I'm gonna give you this, and then we're gonna. Yeah, I'm gonna just touch yeah. this. Yes, the beings are called the soul catchers. Soul catchers, okay. The physical side of them is called Watiko. Watiko, look that up. Watiko. Mm -hmm. Every society on the planet, every culture has what a different name for Wetiko. The mm -hmm. Native Americans called it Wetiko. Mm -hmm. But each culture has another name, Ibuglu. There's different mm -hmm. countries, Ilaga. There's different names for it in these different cultures. Everybody talked about it. Mm -hmm. That these entities that are parasitic energy parasites, they drink disagreeable energy and they will create war disharmony and destruction so they can eat. They're not mean. They're, they're attempting to survive. We can get into that real deep because I, I, I did you just look, did you just did you just look it up? No, nah, I'm, I'm just listening. I'm listening. I'm just listening to you. This cat wrote a book about it too, man. You know, something happened to him. He disappeared. The Witiko. The physical manifestation of Wetiko is called toxoplasma. What you what you talk about? Yeah. But the Wetiko is the unseen, the hidden. And if you allow it, you have to sign up. It can't just take your energy. It's like they're like walk-ins. They just can't walk in. You got to do so many things to allow it. We're going to talk about this. You have to sign an agreement with them in perpetuity. In perpetuity. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. Dr. B, man. There listen, is listen, a listen. way to break the spell.
I'm gonna talk it's, about it's it on the that. next show. It's safe that, and, you yeah. know, y'all come on Saturday to the class. We're gonna talk well, about. I, I, I won't talk about class? that. I won't talk uh, about that. I'll talk about something else that gets to that. Yeah, so we can uh, still have our next show. How they come to the class on Saturday, Doctor B? Go to elevationtime.com. Elevationtime.com. The site's back up. I see it. Okay. Okay. Go to elevationtime.com, and you can go to events, uh -huh. and you can sign up for the class. Or you can go to products. I even have it as a product down there. Just go okay. to events or classes and workshops, and you sign up for the class. It's it, There's two of them now. There's one called When It All Falls Down. Uh -huh. This one is called When It All Falls Down 2. It's Saturday from, from 11 a.m. till 3. It's an uh -huh. actual class. Have your pens and papers. And, you know, Take notes. And I'm going to give you some tools that you can choose to use if you really use them, they're going to work and change your, your vibration. It's a beautiful time. This is the harvest season. Question here is who's being harvested? Mm. Who's getting harvested? Mm. What is being harvested? What is the harvest? Didn't the Brizzy brothers have a song about the harvest for the world? Mm -hmm. What is the harvest? What do you mean by harvest season? And why do you need to eat squash or pumpkin at this time of year? Save that for the next show. Don't tell them that. Save that for the next show. <laughs> Look at your eyes, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta make it fun, man. If you don't laugh, man, you'll just die. So thank you very much. I love you all. You know what I'm saying? Much love to everybody out there. And if you don't feel me, it's all right. I'm not trying to get you to hear this because this is this is some other stuff. I'm out there. I'm gone. <laughs> hey, family, I want to thank everybody for tuning in. Oh, man, this is such an amazing show tonight. Dr. B will be back next week, most likely next Wednesday, but it, it'll definitely be next week. Uh, I'll let you all know a couple of days ahead of time. But, man, this is one you got to rewind. You got to watch again. You got to take notes. Uh, make sure you support the brother with his class this weekend. Also, make sure you uh, support the the brother. The brother has magnificent products. Magnificent products. I got the platinum. That platinum infused has CBD in it. No, this platinum. A is whole up. plant CBD. It doesn't say that on yeah. the website because they'll shut me down. But that one has the whole. This, this, CBD. this is next level shit. That's next only, level. Only right. the advanced people ready for that. So That's right. All right. So listen, Doctor B. Thank you, my brother, for coming on. Family, thank you for tuning in. We still got 2,500 people in here. We've been on over three hours. Y'all y'all stuck really? with us. Y'all thorough. Yeah, don't seem like that way, right? But listen, family, thank you so much. I will see you next time, Brother Rich, Dr. B. Peace. Thank you much. Travel yes, light. Yes. All right. <laughs>